So I am calling this meeting to order at 5.30. And first a reminder that meetings of the select board are meetings conducted in public. They are not meetings of the public. Nonetheless, members of the public shall be afforded reasonable opportunities to express opinions about matters conducted by the select board so long as order is maintained. The rules for public comment are, at the conclusion of a select board discussion on an agenda item, but before any action is taken, there may be 10 minutes afforded to public comment. Comments made by the public must be addressed to the chair or to the select board as a whole and not to any individual members of the select board or members of the public. Members of the public must be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. If a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they should not be recognized again until others have first been given the opportunity to comment. Order and decorum shall be maintained throughout the meeting. Personal, impertinent, threatening, or profane remarks will not be tolerated. For those who are participating via Zoom, please note the chat is not an appropriate avenue for public comment. All public comments must be made verbally when acknowledged by the chair. Please silence all cell phones. A reminder to all that this meeting is being recorded and may appear on the internet. All right, so are there adjustments to the agenda? So um, we were um, just wondering if there was um, any update to the VCRD um, visit and maybe, maybe you can talk about that in your town report or? Yes, about it. Okay. and I did not print that off, but. That's okay. <laughs> Um, I had a whole list of stuff for my town manager's report. Um, do you want to do that while we yeah. approve the minutes? Yeah. 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 Approve the minutes slowly. Yes. Okay. And public comment slowly. Please. All right. Cool. <laughs> um, okay then. Um, so that will be done during the town manager's report. So, um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of October sixth, twenty twenty-two? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of October 6, 2022. Second? I second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of October 6, 2022. Um, did anybody see anything that... Nothing jumps out at me. I didn't see anything either. Um, I just want to mention that they're really they're really nice minutes. I, um, they're getting they're very clear, um, I think, um, and they hit all the relevant points. So that's really good. Yeah, I want to make a comment too because uh, I have two different people doing minutes, and I do review them. And um, I know there has to be a little more detail because. So I did have more added to it, but I think it's I think it's a good mix between detail and you know not not a not a novel, right? So a snapshot um, is kind of what I asked yeah. them to do. And sometimes it's hard when you get into a very long conversation and you're trying to pull out the important pertinent pieces, right? Sure. So it is a learning curve, but it's coming along. Nice. Um, does anybody have any changes to them? Do we, Char Charlie? Do you have any changes to the meet, uh, meet minutes? No, um, no, it's fine. Okay. Um, so hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The next thing is uh, public comment on items not on the agenda. Are there public comments in the room? Don't know if we're on the agenda. I'm sorry. You are on the agenda, and it's going to be a little bit. But okay, um, thank you. You're okay. after, yeah. The agendas are at there on the table. Okay. Is there a public comment on uh, online? I. Um, is that who's that? I'm sorry. Is that a? It's Elizabeth Warner. Oh, hi. Um, you're very small. The, the screen's very small today. I'm sorry. I don't see the names. Um, Elizabeth, go ahead. Um, I just had a question on uh, who is responsible for uh, reporting uh, lead hazards in um, 27 Old Depot Road. Um, we have significant lead issues all around the exterior of the building with a lot of toys out there. 
that has been ongoing for months and months and months. And there are a lot of children under the age of five in that building. And uh, I, I'm just wondering who deals with this? This is uh, pretty significant. Hmm. I'd say it first would go to the health officer, wouldn't it? Um, or yeah, so the building is owned by Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust. Okay. Um, so the health officer would be the first start, right? Can look at that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can send up uh, pictures, um, but it's been there for months. And I personally called and I got no response. And I know uh, two of the tenants with kids did reach out and they also did not get any return of phone calls. Uh, did you, I'm sorry, you called um, Tom Goddard, our health officer? I called directly well, to the um, Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust. Thanks, lady. I'm uh, on the select board. Well, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll call you later. Letting you know what was... What, right and the tenants with the small kids, I spoke to two of them who were friends of mine, and they said they were all um, signed um, notices that there was no lead hazard in the building when they moved in. Um, yeah, I, I, I start with Tom as the health officer, and um, it may be something you'd need to escalate to the state, I'm not sure. So is that on me as a neighbor or does the town address some of these concerns if a landlord isn't handling um, a significant hazard on their building? I don't know how much purview we have as a select board, but um, if you start with Tom, he may have a better sense on whether the town has any jurisdiction on that or not. I, I actually, I, I honestly don't know. Okay. I just wanted to see what, what were the, what was the policy? Um, is there any more public comment online? Uh, public comment in the room, Mike? I could help address that concern that uh, it, it would be the town health officer who would come and probably do a test. Um, first bill I ever recorded was on lead, lead paint in the building, so I, I know a little bit about it. Um, I'm not sure uh, if Tom, Tom is the one who would you would start it, right? can affect something and, and do a test. Well, I, I think, Mike, since you are so connected with Win and Windsor Housing Trust, you might want to do a drive by and make the call yourself. I think it's really important. This has been ongoing for a long time, and there are kids at risk there. There's two new infants in that building as well. And you can see the toys are right next to where the, all of the lead paint is chipping off. Okay, thanks for letting us know. Is there more public comment in the room? Is there more public comment online? Um, uh, Mr. Fairman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I shared with the town manager earlier today a press release from the Southern Vermont Communications Union District, which serves uh, southwestern Vermont, essentially Bennington County. She may have forwarded it to you, by, forwarded it to you folks by now, but I'm not sure of this. Uh, the basis of it is, I'll quote the first bit. The Southern Vermont Communications Union District recently received approval for its $9 million internet fiber construction grant from the Vermont Community Broadband Board. The grant, along with a $3.3 million investment from Consolidated Communications, will cover 6,412 addresses across Southern Vermont. The CUD, in partnership with Consolidated Communications, who will build, maintain, and operate the network, expects all unserved and underserved residents in 14 towns in the CUD to have access to Vidium Fiber's multi-gigabit speed internet in 2023 at competitor prices, uh, un unquote. So I'm, I'm, I'm making this, uh, I, I'm raising this publicly because the question is, what has the Deerfield Valley Communications Union District, which, which Putney joined, actually accomplished in this regard? And because it seems that we may be way behind uh, our, our, our neighbors uh, across the Green Mountains. So I'm simply putting that out there and suggesting that perhaps we invite uh, our 
two representatives to the Deerfield Valley Communications Union District to uh, attend a meeting of, of our select board at your convenience to report to us on the current status. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll, um, we'll, address, that that. At a, we'll address that at a later meeting. But thanks for bringing it up. Um, is there more public comments online? Is there public comment in the room? Okay, hearing none, let's move on to the warrants to the treasurer. Uh, can I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes of October. Uh, yeah, <laughs> approve and execute the warrants <laughs> to the treasurer as presented upon completion. Can I have a second? Second. Um, it's been moved and seconded to approve the warrants <laughs> to the treasurer upon completion of review. So payroll warrant dated October 21st, 2022, in the amount of $19,383.97. Pretty normal payroll. Is yes. <clears throat> um, we did pay the rec league um, director and the concession okay. stand employee. Who's our new director? It is Elizabeth North. Okay. Um, one of our work sessions will go into the league. Okay. Yep. We're going to do a dive into that. <clears throat> All right. Um, accounts payable warrant dated October 8th through October 21st, 2022, in the amount of $172,738.61. The big ticket item is A.S. Clark for the cemetery um, culvert of $102,750. That will be part of the FEMA um, reimbursement. And um, the other one is the health insurance. But in the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department, there's two actual um, months worth of service there. Um, yeah, so that that chunk of money, that's the actual culvert itself, not the work that went into it? Just or? the culvert. Just the culvert. Yeah, so that total product was about $131,000. Okay. So do you have any questions about the uh, accounts payable? There's really nothing else that's like, you know, unusual. Um, there are some bills, Twin State Truck Service, um, Fire Department had some vehicles um, worked on, you know, general maintenance. Um, the Sourcey also. So they're just trying to maintain and go through things. Okay. Charlie, do you have any questions on the warrants? Charlie? No questions. Okay. Um, anybody else? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Um, town manager's report. Oh, what did I do with it? Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I have different glasses on, too, and I'm just like, oh, here it is. Sorry, folks. Um, so, Highway Department is out and about Brady Roads. Um, they're up on Holland Hill, Putney Mountain. They're going to get some small side streets um, probably this week. And by next week, they should have them all graded. So they're looking pretty good. I haven't had too many phone calls about Wash 40 Roads. Um, we are down one person. Um, full-time person, but we're going to pick up a part-time person for the winter season. Um, Tyler Wesley, he did work for us. Okay. Um, so he'll be um, plowing with us. Um, I also have, we have another um, employee who just had surgery. Um, they may be out 12 weeks. Wow. So just letting you know, folks out there. 
things don't seem to be getting done, just give my office a call and um, I'll follow up. Um, we signed that Cargill contract for salt. It came last week, it came late. Um, it is a state bid. Um, it went up. It's $11.50 per ton. Um, we end up with 450 ton. So it's an increase from last year of $5,175. So there's not much you can do. We need it. Um, I'll just let you know that um, other towns are challenged just like we are. And other town managers are calling each other and saying, hey, what are you doing? You know? So everybody's comparing numbers mm -hmm. right now. So when you say it's a state bid, what do you, what does that mean? So the state goes out to bid and they try to get the lowest price. Okay. And then it all gets and posted. Filters down. Yeah, and then okay. we have that opportunity to get that low price. Okay. But sometimes if you shop around, yeah. You can sometimes get a local price that's even a little bit lower. Okay. So but um State bids will stay at that contract price. Yeah, it doesn't change. Okay. Although with Cargill, that was one of the questions. You know, what are other towns paying? Yeah, but it depends on what district you're in and how much um, travel. Oh, you know, from where it's dropped. That's fair. Yeah, you know the trucking mm -hmm. costs. So yeah, um, they're not all the same. Okay, <laughs> so you so. can't really compare apples to apples. No. Okay, no. Um, the Municipal Roads Grant Program, the equipment grant, remember I had said that, you know, we kind of lost the opportunity mm -hmm. um, because we couldn't get the blower. Yeah. Well, they extended the grant. So now, and Brian did buy, I told you, Brian mm -hmm. bought the yeah, blower. He bought it, yeah. And um, he actually brought it by today. I was impressed, took pictures. <laughs> I have to have pictures, I have to have the maintenance log yeah. that goes in with this grant. Um, so the cost to the town would be five thousand ninety-five dollars versus the ninety-two ninety-five. Good, great. So that's a bonus. We dodged that bullet. Um, welcoming and engaging communities cohort updates. So Jonathan Johnson and I went to the town fair. We had our first meeting. Um, it went really well. It's interesting. Um, the speaker. Um, She's humorous, so it was good. Um, we're doing a schedule now. There's going to be an employee survey that needs to be filled out. And um, so we're trying to make it mandatory and, and try to get a high response. But um, as this evolves, we'll keep you up to date. But um, it's going to be a process. Vermont Council on Rural Development. BCRD, um, so we met on October 13th, the steering committee, and there was about 12 people. Um, and we came up with four subjects, four forums that will be discussed at um, the first community visit slash dinner, which is scheduled for November 14th. It's a Monday night. Um, I don't have the time yet. December 12th will be the second meeting. January 17th is the third meeting. Um, what's happening right now is we're coordinating the food because the town's responsible to um, put on the dinner and do a mass mailing. Um, so BCRD has a lot of information right now and we're pulling together a list and there's gonna be cold calls to a lot of different people. And once the word gets out there, I mean, it's just gonna be like a firestorm. So what we're looking for is engagement from the community and participation for, you know, to create this strategic plan for a vision and the future of Putney. So more information is gonna come out so people just need to be patient because I know it's on Facebook and everybody's all excited. And um, but <laughs> it was nice to see the excitement though. Yeah, that, yes. was, that was very that yep. was great. Yep. Um, so just be patient. It will, we should probably see something in about a week. And once we get the mailing out and everything on social media platforms, um, 
there's going to be plenty of opportunity and we're looking at Putney Central School as a venue only because my hope is we'll have more than 200 people there. Mm. My hope would really be as if we had 400 people show up. Wow. Because what's the capacity of that? Um, in the gym? Yeah. It's pretty large, so. I know, it's pretty large. It's just curious. I mean, we do town meeting there, yeah. so. But we, we close only, it out, it's like half. It we only take half. up half the yeah. space, so it, there's usually a couple hundred people. Right. At that point. So you could so, probably fit too Yeah. Or 400. Yeah. Right? yeah. We're just not going to do it between town hall and next stage. Right. So. A couple questions. Sure. Um, do you have a sense of what the PR process will be in terms of it'll? You're you're saying in about a week it'll we'll be rolling it out, and what what do you anticipate that being a ma the mailing? So it's going to be a postcard. A postcard, yeah. It's going to go to everyone with a zero five three four six zip code. Mm -hmm. So part of the conversation too was so. Not everybody lives in Putney. Mm -hmm. They may work in Putney. They may go to school. You know, whatever it is, they may shop here. So we want, you know, the perimeter of Putney. Whoever comes in, they can be part of this process. Okay. Because it could and it could be valuable information mm -hmm. that we as community members don't see. Mm -hmm. So. So 05346, we'll yep. all get. That's, that's Demerston and Westminster, yeah. too, yes. right? Or parts yep. of it, yeah. Yep. And um, so. so yeah. I, Putney, um, the Commons, the Bradbury Informer, um, TVs, radios, um, Facebook, Facebook, Front Porch Forum, whatever it is, you know, bulletin boards. Nice. You know, like school groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, and can can you share what the four topics, the themes were that you guys came up with, that that steering committee came up with? Yeah, let me see if I can remember. Housing is definitely one of them. Okay. Um, economic I, development is another one. I see you. So. Economic, I'm not saying I can help remember the mission to Oh. Economic development and um, community resilience. Oh, community. Oh, I'm about to ask you. Ah, yeah. Community connections and um, resilience. Synergy. What was the What was the fourth one? It's everything else: youth, aging, and family. oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah. else. That's the most important one, I think, honestly. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> those are some big themes. Yeah. But I think within those forums, then it'll be narrowed down. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of discussion. And it's not going to all happen in the first meeting. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to solve everything in the first no. meeting. No. <laughs> But so, it's good to get yeah. those dates out as quickly as possible. Yeah. So it's not that far out. It is, and it is no. a busy time of year for a lot of people. Yes. Uh, Swift, do you have a comment? Yeah, I just, um, just echoing the excitement of the process and um, really yeah. welcoming folks um, to give myself as a equity co-chair co in the equity committee or Karen feedback or brainstorming on how to get more people in this room. Like we're doing all of the traditional things and thinking of non-traditional things. And especially folks that might not be drawn to this sort of process are not interested in this sort of process. Ideas on how to still get their points of views and perspectives. And um, this is all that this, this organization does, but they really turn to us as experts. Um, so how to be attracted to folks at the paper mill, how to be attracted to people that um, are Greenwood school parents, like all these folks that we don't necessarily have um, direct communication with daily from seeing them and, um, or wouldn't maybe someone else that might not be drawn to going into a room and sitting down and talking about things, but we still wanna hear from them. So um, keeping that channel open and gathering information as we can as experts of our town. Okay, thanks. There's also going to be a hybrid 
component to this. So look, I don't know what that looks like or how it's going to work, yeah. but. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, moving on, because I know we have guests. I don't want to keep them waiting too long. Um, let's see. Budget process, I'm in swing with that. Okay. So I'm hoping by November 9th, I will roll out a draft budget All right. in our work session. Okay. Um, let's see. I've been to some different programs. I just want to touch base. So Town Fair in Killington, um, that's where we had the welcoming and engaging communities cohort first meeting. Um, I did get some valuable information from Efficiency Vermont that I'm going to share with the Energy Committee. And the Employee Assistance Program was um, a valuable resource as well. Um, let's see. Middlebury, Vermont, two days up there for the Vermont City Managers Association. Okay. So I was in a room with city managers, town managers, town administrators, and um, the LCT was actually there too. Mm. Um, so the key items that I get out of there, Mike, you're going to enjoy this. Um, there's a lot of frustration in, in, in a lot of municipalities right now. It's been very challenging. And it was enlightening and it made me, um, gave me some confidence and that 20 year city managers on a much bigger level are, are as frustrated as I have been for the past six months. Okay. Um, so the state rolls out, Laura, you can probably relate to this too. So when the state rolls out like a new program or a mandate or you know a law and like stormwater, right? And they expect rural municipalities to, you know, do this unrealistic schedule or deadline. And it's very difficult for towns. And there is a lot of frustration. You know, small towns don't have the money. And then when the state says, all right, you have until 2025 to get all these roads up to, you know, standard, it, it's unrealistic. And it's very challenging. It puts a lot of pressure on us. And um, I think it's a bigger topic that we need to have. Um, so that's one thing that came out of that meeting. Um, Karen Horn and Gwen was, they were there too, and, and they heard us, you know, so. And who are they? Um, they're with the uh, VLCT. So um, they follow all the legislative changes, mm -hmm. so. There's, yeah. a, there's a lobbying arm to VLCT, isn't there? Yeah. 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 So they would uh, theoretically they would go back to the legislator legislatures right. and say, hey, the yeah. towns are frustrated about this. Yes. Right. And they um, do fight for the towns, you know, but there's only so much there's so much going on and, and sometimes it comes down so quickly too, you know. And even with COVID, you know, a lot of things happen, a lot of things change, but you know with the politics, you, you got to stop and think, you know, how are, how are these towns handling this stuff? You know, we have limited resources financially. And then, you know, if we're made to, you know, buy this piece of equipment or have that done, you know, in a, in a certain time frame in a, in, in a way that we can't financially even afford, you know, how is that realistic for a small town? It's not. And, you know, we all do the best we can, but, and I know there's a lot of money right now out there, but, you know, the deadlines have to be realistic. Um, so, I came away to, like, um, evaluating our assets. It was a small town. 
measurable metrics that are attainable and relevant, zoning is going to become a huge problem. If towns don't update their zoning regulations, it will limit growth and it will restrict it. And pay attention to the town plan, we're updating it right now, and I'm gonna stress this. Don't be part of the process once it's done, because when if you're not satisfied and you weren't part of that process, then shame on you. This is all important stuff, and this will affect the future. And if you only have a handful of people in the process you're not going to be able to change it for another eight years. So, um, some code words, vibrant, resilient, sustainability, social, cultural, welcoming, innovative, vitality, synergy. You know, that's what we talked about up there, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all important to all of us, but you know, we need the support too. And, you know, to build a strong community that's resilient and sustainable, you know, we need to be taking a hard look. And, you know, this Vermont Council on Rural Development process right now is going to be very critical and important for this town. And I'm stressing that people need to be engaged in the process. Um, second homeowners, you know, they don't live here. Yeah, they pay less taxes because they're not utilizing the services, but those are the people in the future that will bring money to the town. So we need to be looking at all our stakeholders, even the invisible ones. So. And that's what I took away from the TA conference up there. Um, I feel better because I'm not the only one feeling <laughs> the frustration, yeah. but, um, you know, we have to work together and I know we can do it. Well, it sounds like it was a good conference. Yeah. That's good. So, that's all I got. That's all you got. <laughs> all right. All right. Is there a public comment, um, online, uh, Mr. Fairman? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, uh, what, what our town manager just mentioned, second homes in Putney. I, I should mention to the public that uh, I did a study recently on second homes in Wyndham County. About 20% of, 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 of homes in Putney are second homes. So it's a significant number. I have a couple of uh, brief questions for our town manager. The first one is concerning the, uh, uh, the state bid salt. Is that drop shipped at Putney or do we have to truck it from somewhere? No, it's um, drop shipped to Rockingham and then it gets trucked here. And we do the trucking? No, they do the trucking. They being Rockingham or the supplier? The supplier. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, I'm, gl I'm glad to hear that. I wondered if we got stuck having to, you know, have somebody drive to Rutland or something to get it. So I'm glad that's not true. No. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, but before the question, I need to uh, add a little preface here. Uh, the 2022 state and local government municipal day is going to be October 28th at, uh, up at uh, Vermont Technical College, 30 bucks each, including uh, breakfast and lunch. In other words, a really good deal. And there's all kinds of seminars are, uh, is, is our town government uh, considering uh, having some people attend? <laughs> that one was not on my radar. When is it? It is October 28th. Uh, what I will do, uh, I, I'm not sure how, but I'm on the mailing list for such things. And I did send a copy to a member of the conservation committee because one of the sessions is about wetlands. But uh, what I'll do is uh, uh, later I'll, I'll, I'll send a copy of the announcement to our town manager who can forward it to you all. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, because uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. They've got uh, 
I think it's something like uh, 30 sessions. You know, the usual situation, you know, there's a choice of several at, uh, at each time of the day, and there's four, uh, what do you call them, uh, no, uh, time periods, two before lunch and two after lunch. So, uh, and, and the price is certainly right. So I'm glad I brought it up since it hadn't shown up on the radar. I'll, I'll get that out uh, uh, later today. So you'll have it okay, uh, t tomorrow. And that takes care of that. Thank you. Are you trying to get rid of it? Um, so I'd just like to remind the public that chat mm -hmm. is not an appropriate avenue for public comment. And if you have something to say, you need to say it publicly. All right. Um, is there any other public comment about the town manager's report? Uh, Deborah. Uh, the question I put in the chat was about uh, how can residents get involved with the town plan? Karen just mentioned that we should, but she didn't say how that would happen. So we are doing this uh, VCRD um, community visit. That would be one way to voice your opinion if you're not comfortable or are unable to um, go to planning commission meetings. Um, planning commission meetings are um, open to the public and they meet uh, the first Tuesday yes. of every month at seven. Yes. Um, so that would be the most direct way to do that. I know that they're also planning on um, doing public comments on, on pieces of the town report, um, town plan when they get that far. So that would be a good way to, um, to get involved. Um, there may even be a spot on the planning commission. There is. So you could put your name in for that if you want to be part of the process um, that way. Um, anybody else have any good ways to get involved? Uh, another, one other question. How long, how much time do you see it will take to create a new town plan? Is it a year, half a year, two years? It's well, usually a year, it's usually a year but uh, there is a deadline. I believe it's this uh, coming year, 2024, 2024? 2023. Is it 2023? It's yes. been, okay. Um, so um, it's coming up and to be honest, it'll take as long as um, it takes given the people that we have working on it. So um, well, we do have two consultants. Yeah. That's right, we have consultants. So now, that's so. helping, but um, it is still a big process. But I know they have not started drafting the new town plan or the amended town plan. Um, they're still working on certain sections. Okay, gathering information. Yeah. Right. So I'm just saying you're suggesting that you should be on the planning commission have a space open or can a resident just make suggestions um, I'm sure the I'm sure the uh, Commission would welcome suggestions if you'd like to um, email them to the chair which is Pip Banster at the moment I, I believe yes. um, or even maybe even just send them to Karen and she can forward them on but um, yeah any public comment is certainly welcome and you're you don't have to be on the Planning Commission you can just come to the meetings um, they're hybrid, so um, they're, you can attend them from the comfort of your own home. Um, so yeah, I encourage everybody to, to get involved in that process. Um, Mary? Hi, uh, um, this is Robin, oh, hi, Robin. Uh, a member of the Planning <laughs> Commission, and I just wanted to welcome any feedback uh, from any members of the community, as Eileen pointed out, we meet uh, every Tuesday, uh, um, or I'm sorry, first Tuesday of the month, um, seven o'clock. It's available both in uh, in person at town hall and um, also on Zoom. And either way, uh, you know, we are uh, always actively seeking uh, public feedback as to what we're working on, as are other committees. Yeah, that's they, thanks. Th thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. All, all of our committees are open to the public and in fact, uh, would love to not work in a vacuum. So if there's public um, 
if the public wants to uh, meet at any of our meetings, they're, they're absolutely welcome. And I believe most of the meetings are hybrid these days. So um, for now, for now, yep. yeah. Um, so um, yeah, get involved. Uh, is there any other public comment on the town manager's report online? Is there any comment in the room about the town manager's report? All right, moving on to boards, committees, and commissions. We have the Putney Affordable Housing Advisory Committee update. That's you, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to come and uh, start with appreciating your work and our town managers especially. Uh, it's been a, a lot the last few years, hasn't it? Last two years. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so thank you all. Um, I'm going to stand if that's okay. It's fine. I have a written report, and I'd be glad to forward a copy for the record to the, to the town manager. Well, the current iteration of the Putney Affordable Housing Advisory Committee would like to report on its work for the last few years, offer some, some suggestions, and respectfully request either a specific future charge or to disband. The committee was first formed over a decade ago to provide perspective on the proposal to clean up the brownfield across from Basketville and then erect 40 units of housing. The ensuing public reaction to this project from elicited the Brattleboro Housing Trust withdrawal of the proposal. After that experience, the committee felt the next step would be to invite several of the opponents of that project onto the committee and begin a learning process for what other communities are doing to address housing needs and what might work in Putney. To their credit, all participants opened their minds, rolled up their sleeves, and dug in to get good information from other towns in Vermont and our townspeople. And that brings up the memory of the recently departed Francis Temple. Francis was an active member of the committee that started with his opposition to that plan. His initial reservations about any project were tempered by his dedication to do what's best for the town and his input was invaluable, another reason he is missed. One result from that committee is that the committee encouraged further investment in the town from what became the Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust. And at that time, uh, just to delve into the history a little bit more, there was a housing trust in Springfield, it was the housing trust in Brattleboro. I think Springfield was on the edge of becoming insolvent. And uh, the alternative was either dissolving, selling off the properties, which were providing affordable housing for a lot of people, or a merger, and at the time Connie Snow of Brattleboro facilitated a merger, which is why we have now the Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust. The recent iteration of the Putney Affordable Housing Advisory Committee was reformed about three years ago when Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust began plans to develop the gateway property across from the fire station at Putney Co-op. The committee has been kept abreast of the plans through the initial stages, participated in hearing from townspeople, and also participated in the public meetings held by them to get feedback from town residents, including the Zoom meeting with over 90 participants. This project has now received its approval to move ahead with a permit from the Putney DRB, and currently that permit is being appealed and is in the courts. Our understanding and the status of the project is that when the appeal is adjudicated, securing full funding will commence and a further hope is to be able to start building in 2023. Coincidental to this is the word from the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board that they are fully behind this project and ready to buy and hold the land should court proceedings tarry. Interim, the Housing Committee has also heard from far and wide in regards to other options for owning a home or helping be part of coordinated housing developments here. Most recently, we heard from State Representative Tom Stevens of Waterbury, who is the chair of the Vermont House of Representatives Committee for Housing military and general affairs. He updated us on various options being pursued by the state using funds coming from the federal government, 
This includes more money for VHCB and thus the regional housing trusts, funding to adjust homelessness in Vermont, as well as an attempt to stimulate housing for the missing middle, those working class people who are finding with the dearth of housing, um, it's harder and harder to, to find housing that's in their range of being affordable. We also heard from Bruce Whitney of the Home Buying Assistance Program with Wyndham Windsor, who went over various options, starting with educating people on how they can avail themselves of finding funding for homing and how to fill out their applications. Uh, we also heard from the Earthbridge Land Trust. They serve uh, communities in southern Vermont and New Hampshire. I think they provide housing for about 30 families and significant acreage, a lot of it which is in agriculture. Uh, we heard from Anna Marie Pluhar of Dummerston, who shared information on the shared housing project. This helps match those with extra rooms in their houses to offer long-term rentals. We also heard from John Bartholomew of Hartford, Vermont, who provided background and an update on the Cobb Hill Co-Housing Project, an intentional community in Hartford, in Hartman. This group provides housing for 50 families, as well as coordinates farm work and cheese production business associated with the entity. At this point in time, the committee offers these suggestions, starting with offering our support for the Gateway Project currently in the works. With COVID amplifying a housing shortage into a housing crisis statewide, any housing we can bring online will help. This project also aligns with the planning philosophy of smart growth. And the committee heard a presentation from staff at the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources on smart growth and how we can support planned growth, more efficiently utilize resources, and prevent sprawl. Sprawl. <laughs> that too. That's even worse than sprawl. <laughs> One item to note that became evident during the least recent legislative reapportionment is that while Putney lost population, like many towns in Vermont, especially the four southern counties, we didn't really lose households. And I was talking to our town clerk who shared this information. Our assertion is that there have been many households in town that at one point in the recent past had four members, five members, and now are down to two, or maybe even one. And that maybe there are many houses out there where people have more house than they need, but where would they go? Mm -hmm. And one option would be to do what we could to try and perhaps facilitate some senior housing in town. Perhaps if people as they age, and I'm not talking about a nursing home, I'm talking about a, a, just for people who are, who are getting older, to have some sort of housing option, then maybe that could free up larger housing for growing families. That's a big if, but it's something perhaps to look into in the future and see, maybe with uh, Wyndham Regional, if there's already information that might uh, fit into this slot, Another suggestion is, is a town survey to try and gauge current suggestions from town people as what's needed and wanted in regards to housing. And I know that the, the Rural, um, Rural Development Council project is going to have a part of this. So that may mm -hmm. be a piece of this, or maybe something more comprehensive. Rattleboro recently did a hired somebody to do a housing study, and there's some good information that they got from that. Then the Speaker of the House, Jill Kerwinski, was in Brattleboro last month uh, at a forum at the Winston Pratt Center on housing, and a suggestion was made um, by someone from Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation that what might work well is if smaller towns banded together to fund the position with Wyndham Regional that would focus on housing development. Um, one of the things we kept bumping into is we're volunteers. We're all full, have full lives. There's only so much a volunteer board can do. And if we set that intention and then follow it through with, with having somebody in a position like that, perhaps that would be the best way 
to avail ourselves of some natural development. The need for housing in Vermont has become critical. It's a barrier to economic growth, to maintain many of the medical, educational, and economic services we currently take for granted. Vermont has also been told to expect climate refugees as climate continues to rear its head and show and manifest in more storms, more powerful storms, and the opposite, drought and other places. We're also welcoming refugees from Afghanistan, and many of those has, have already folded into the workforce that is just ready for more workers as well. And, and that's something we may need to, we may be able to avail ourselves of to find more workers locally and throughout the county. But he's not immune to the pressures of losing population, especially younger people. As I noted with that, that dynamic of fewer people, but less house, uh, same number of households, but fewer people. The Vermont Department of Labor estimates there are currently over 20,000 jobs in the state going on that. With housing being one of the key barriers to people coming from other places to take jobs, and housing just isn't there. One thing I want to suggest is perhaps trying to facilitate public-private partnership. At some point, businesses are going to have to take a bigger step and be part, more part of the situation. However, we have waited for the free market to make an adequate response, and that free market philosophy has failed us. With that free market failure, the role of government may be the catalyst we need to make sure we can meet current and future housing needs. And we urge the select board to be open to local area and statewide efforts as they open up. Until such time, we recognize we're all volunteers here. The committee has come to a point where we recognize the limits of what a volunteer committee can do. If there's a specific charge the select board has for the committee, we're welcome to try and take that on. Or we're also ready to say, we've done the work for several years, it's time to lay this down. We're open to further discussion and realize I put a lot on the table for you, and probably the best thing is to give some time for that to percolate, uh, percolate and maybe uh, schedule discussion, further discussion at a, at a future time, in the near future. But um, we're op certainly open to your, to your comments now, and also want to thank you and appreciate the time to serve the town. Can I comment? Uh, thank, well, first of all, thank you very much for that. That was that was uh, very comprehensive, and uh, thank you for all the work that you've been doing. Um, it's been very, it's definitely um, been, uh, it's highlighted a lot of different issues and a lot of different solutions. Um, and uh, I recognize the volunteer uh, group, and you've done tremendous work. Um, comments, Karen? Yeah. So I want to say thank you very much too. Um, I think the housing committee, whether we rename it, um, affordable is not always the best word choice because there is a gap. Um, I think it's important that this work continue and maybe the committee stays idle until after the Vermont Council on Rural Development, because one of the forums is housing, Mike, and we know we're seeing it in the community. Um, you know, our elders are probably in a dwelling that's way too big for them. If there was an option for them to stay in Putney to have housing, that would open up those bigger homes for new families to come into Putney. So there's a lot of money out there following down from the federal government into the state. Now is the opportunity to capture that money and housing is part of that equation. So I think by January we're going to have a better vision. So I think it's important and critical to maintain this committee. Is there any other comments on the select board? I mean, I tend to agree with Karen um, that a housing committee or, or a committee that is studying housing 
um, in some form is, is needed in the future. And I, 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 we do need to have um, maybe a more focused charge since the, fo the charge was written 10 years ago. Um, so, it, so I think that's, that's right. I also um, like the idea of having towns band together to um, have a professional come in to really um, do a comprehensive housing study for the rural communities. Um, you know, Brattleboro was able to do their own, but, um, but obviously it filters out to all of us as well, and we don't have the capacity to, to hire somebody on our own. Um, so I like that discussion. I like that, um, yeah. that, um, idea. Um, we do have funding though, that our funds mm -hmm. could ultimately, you know, start the process of a housing study. And I think we're going to hear from Bradborough Development Credit Corporation and, um, Wyndham Regional Commissioner, they're doing some good things too. I think everybody's thinking about the same thing on economic development consultants, grant writers, the whole nine yards. Because there's opportunity right now, and it's probably only going to be there for two years. And if we don't, or less, Laura? <laughs> I, mean, I, think the, I think the opportunity is always there. There's a lot of money there right now. Right yeah. now. But, but there's always opportunity working together. Okay. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> uh, Deborah. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, thank you all for your service to our community and Michael for his many many years of serving the community. And uh, it was very hard to hear what he said. And I'm wondering if he could um, like uh, publish his letter or email it to me or something. It's, I really couldn't hear. What he was saying. He's very far away from the microphone. Is it? Yeah, what? Are we? Can we hear the public on the. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of echo in the room and it was oh, hard okay. to hear exactly what he said. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I believe he said he was going to email it to Karen as well, anyway. So um, we'll probably be able to get that out to the public in some way. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Madam Chair, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I knew. Just, yeah. it just it just she blanked on me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, go ahead. Yeah, I just Madam Chair, and I thought that was an incredible report. A lot of really good suggestions, and um, the committee's obviously done a lot of work, and very much appreciated. Uh, I also it suddenly struck me in terms of elderly housing. You know, like single individuals being in a large unit, a large house, whether one of those houses couldn't be used, whether there could be a discussion of cooperative housing. Yeah, that, that's the program and the Marie Pluhar works with them to create shared housing. Oh, and, wow, yeah, that would be. And she'd be a, somebody, but though, that's a, another option yeah. where uh, a co-housing unit, a shared housing, Certainly a viable option. Certainly, when I first moved to Putney, there were a lot of houses like that. <laughs> yeah, we know. We were younger. Yeah. <laughs> and like well, this, the head of the what, One second. Sorry. Go, go ahead, Ann. Oh, I was just going to say, as head of the Conservation Commission, I was also very impressed with the idea that we sort of try to focus development and so only that the land is available to do that, and that it might be interesting to do it. If you can get a consultant to do a survey of land in the village area or adjacent areas where this housing might be developed. And the problem there is that it's privately owned and you'd have to discuss, as the Gateway Project did, with the owner of the land what you know they foresee and if they would want to be involved. But I definitely uh, hope that in all of the meetings that are upcoming, the value of our forests and wildlife will also be taken into account and hopefully we can maintain a balance and meet many needs because those open areas and forests really are our lungs. And they're starting to become the lungs of the world as more and more forests will fly. 
Thank you. Uh, Deborah, do you uh, have another comment? Sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. I'm sorry, Eva, you had a comment. Yes, uh, the uh, Mike, when you were talking about the elderly uh, housing, and I think that that's something that our committee didn't really focus on, but I've realized that down on Old Depot Road, where the uh, priest used to live, that house, someone has bought it, and women now are moving in to live there. I think it's a group of you know elderly women. I don't know what's elderly. Let's say over 60, maybe or maybe 70, I don't know. But but I know that Leon Cooper's <laughs> sister moved here and she's living in that place. So it'd be worth uh, finding out about, uh, you know, and, and it was set up for the priest. So it, it, each room has a sink in it. And then there's a main room for a dining room and each person takes one week for cooking. It's a rather interesting uh, uh, situation there. Hmm. Thanks for that update. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Um, hmm? Eva, who did you say was living there? Uh, that, I can't tell you the name of it, but I know that Leon Cooper's sister has just moved in. So Deb Stetson, who's Leon's uh, ex-partner, she would know about it. And she visited the place. I haven't felt up to snuff to be able to go down and visit. And I'm very interested. But I'm pretty sure there's six rooms and that the those rooms were what the priest had. And, oh, yeah, it was set up for priest and visiting priest. And uh, you do know that before 91 went in, that right across the way, uh, uh, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, Putney, uh, uh, you know, what it, what it is right now, and no, it's not being used. What's it called? The right Putney across the way. Putney Inn? No. Across no, the if, way. Yeah, the Putney Inn. Hold on. The Putney Inn. <laughs> Okay. Putney Inn was part of that uh, a Catholic uh, retreat or whatever it was, retreat center or or school or something. It was it was a training center for Catholic priests, and so all that land there and all that, and ninety one bought uh, they bought the land from the Catholics, but all the way across the Old Depot Road, that whole section belonged to the Catholic Church, yeah, mm -hmm. the Catholic in in the oh. state of Vermont. But anyway, so that was one of the places. Yeah, I don't, I'm surprised you all don't know that living here in Putney that you don't know. That <laughs> a lot of us live, uh, moved here after 91. <laughs> um, okay. Elizabeth. Um, I've been speaking with Robin Ekstrom recently and he asked me to bring some proposals forward. Uh, and I think that we need to identify land that is um, infill housing, true infill housing, and perhaps using ARPA money, we can um, offer the town to take up the cost of the surveying if there is going to be some subdividing. Um, we also, um, Mike Marwicki pitched the same thing about Putney Landing, that it was going to open up housing for the seniors, but it has to be true housing for seniors that have affluence, um, you know, you cannot, we have a lot of seniors in the hills with very large houses with affluence. They have more money than they would qualify for moving into a Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust facility. And I know I've been preaching this ad nauseum, but we really need to be offering true housing for uh, what is needed in the town, which is workforce housing and senior housing and not just reactive uh, housing uh, because uh, a developer has come in and made an offer. It's like, this is why I'm so excited about the November 14th opportunity for people to really bring in ideas. But um, I know a few village residents who are willing to um, develop their properties or subdivide their properties and try to do true infill housing. And I'm really hoping that we as a town can uh, consider the gateway of Putney as an economic driver for the town. and. Um, maybe look forward to other locations again to build housing and utilize the only uh, community green space uh, as an economic driver. Um, okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Fairman? Uh, Mr. Fairman, you're on mute. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, 
Madam Chair, following uh, on from what the previous speaker said, uh, I live at Putney Landing, which is both senior housing. There are, there are eight one bedroom apartments here, all occupied by seniors. And there also are 12 townhouses occupied by families, some of whom are also in the workforce. So Putney Landing, in fact, is both senior housing and workforce housing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there a public comment in the room? You have one more hand up. I do. Heather Small. Uh, I, I think that's the, Heather, you're not, you don't have your hand up, do you? I think that's the cursor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, nothing I want. Okay. Right. We, just, we have the cursor on your, yeah. on your, on your screen. Okay. All right. Okay. I got We're, confused. That's a, I've done that before too. All right. So is there any public comment in the room? On this, is there any more public comment online? Um, okay, so moving up. Can I just reflect what I think I heard from you? Uh, sure. The board Go ahead. manager was to let's hang on until maybe winter after the process. Um, It'll be February. It unfolds and then perhaps next steps and and these are my words here mm -hmm. perhaps a different name of the committee a different charge mm -hmm. yep uh, and yeah see that where was, we go from there that, i think that's yeah i think that's yeah. our, right. our is that accurate our sense of, the sense of the sense of the board is that we don't want a, i mean you've done great work and there may not be something for you to meet on until then but right to just hold on and uh um if you're still willing to be a committee um where we can find other willing volunteers, but I think the I think the committee itself, um, or the idea of a, some kind of housing committee, is definitely still needed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Is there any other public comment in the room? Any public comment online? All right. Moving on to select board uh, new business. We have the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation, Laura. With sevens too. With right? sevens too, right? I, should, I yeah. should have put that it on the agenda. It doesn't say that, but yes. yeah. yeah, that's that is perfectly fine. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Laura Sibilia. I'm the director of regional strategies at the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation, as well as a state rep. I am here with my BDCC hat on. I did have my <laughs> state rep ears on earlier, Karen. <laughs> and uh, your excellent rep, I'm sure, will. Uh, collaborate with us on those challenges. Uh, so here with uh, my BDCC hat on, our colleague uh, Nathaniel Hussey. I don't know if you had a chance to meet uh, Natty, as we call him yet. Uh, uh, so he's here and will be able to report on a number of our programs. This is our annual meeting uh, time when we go out to all communities, provide an update on what we have been doing in the last year um, with uh, municipal investment, with federal investment, with the funds that we raise ourselves, uh, what we've been able to accomplish together. And I'll just give these to you. Thank you. That is actually last year's uh, report and underneath it are our 2019 sets, which I'll speak to in just a minute. So uh, Natty, as I said, can talk to a number of the different programs that we have. Uh, as you folks know, Putney has been a supporter of working regionally on a number of different projects through SEVITS, uh, largely workforce projects, uh, business um, improvement projects, uh, and uh, those are <clears throat> those receive um, a big boost from the municipalities working together, mm -hmm. raising funding, approving funding at town meeting, um, uh, and we use those funds to leverage additional funding to bring in personnel and work on problems that are hard for towns to work on by themselves. So uh, we have, uh, as I said, workforce development programs, business programs, uh, young. Professionals programs. Putney is also part of, part of uh, and I think works with the Southern Vermont Economy Project. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can talk about that as well. 
I'm kind of stepping all over Natty's, Natty's lines here. <laughs> uh, I'm actually here to talk to you about the next iteration of work that we will do as part of the Southern Vermont Zone, which is Wyndham and Bennington County, our next SEDS, and to request a support letter from the town uh, for a federal designation of the zone. Okay. So that will be the next kind of piece. So, Natty, what Same did here. I miss? Thank you, thank you, Laura. <laughs> Again, uh, my name is Nathaniel Natty Hussey. Uh, I'm the Director of Business Acceleration at the Battleground Development Credit Corporation. And to give you an idea of some of the programs that we work on, uh, which are really under the strategic guidance of uh, SEVIDS and the SEDS, uh, are some that Laura spoke to, workforce development. Some of that uh, was actually mentioned, or part of that was mentioned previously with the Afghan refugees. We have been helping get them into uh, the job market. Uh, I don't actually have numbers on that, but uh, of the 90 some odd individuals workforce age that came last year, uh, they are almost all gainfully employed at this point. There are some mothers with small children, uh, so that is uh, you know, some outliers there. Um, in terms of um, uh, community facilities programming, um, we have some staff which assists towns in, in looking into uh, their facilities and how they might be able to improve them, um, you know, be it electrical or, or facade improvements, etc. Uh, we also work um, intimately with the school systems in Wyndham County uh, through our Pipelines and Pathways program. And actually, tomorrow at Leland and Gray is the Wyndham County uh, Reality Fair. Uh, which a majority of the BDC staff will be at um, to assist um, juniors and seniors? Yes, from all of the public high schools. Yes, juniors and seniors from all the public high schools in Wyndham County, um, getting a taste of what financial literacy will look like when they become, when they leave the doors uh, of their institution, uh, mm -hmm. as well as some practical skills that they're going to need <clears throat> going forward. Uh, in the business services side of things, we assist small businesses who have the best ideas in sliced bread and help them create a plan and ideally hire people eventually. That is part of the charge uh, and the strategy of SEVIDS is increase the population, increase the workforce, and increase the average wage for the average employee. Um, so what we look to do is help a business start, grow, and hire on people to them who can then uh, increase their salary and wages. Just a, a little tidbit here, um, the winner of last year's business plan competition was your, your dear Dina Moses with Vermont Weaving. Um, she is now going into the second year of her grant award um, in building out her, her business here in Putney, and we are assisting her do, to do that. Mm -hmm. We also uh, have some micro lending programs through the SBA and USDA which were able to assist small businesses in obtaining financing, which they would not be able to obtain at a traditional lender due to um, below average credit scores or no credit history, for example. Um, we are a micro lender and we're able to help them do that. Um, and so in order to help forward these programs uh, and part of that seven strategic mission, um, that is why Laura and I are here tonight to, uh, along with the letter that was sent to the board and the town, uh, make a request uh, as part of um, an allocation per um, resident of Putney uh, towards that mission, financial financial investment. Mm -hmm. And I should, uh, I missed a really important part, which is uh, SEVIDS is the Southeastern Vermont Economic Development Strategies Group. That is a strategic regional group of folks that come together and look at over the last 10 years, some pretty wicked problems, start learning about them, where are the handles on this, what might we be able to do, and help the public, towns, businesses kind of grapple with how could we start solving this. Sevitz, does not, Sevitz has a Putney board member, uh, Keith Marks uh, is an active uh, board member with yeah. Sevitz, and a delight to have for us. Yeah. Um, uh, Sevitz does not have staff. So SEVITS just contracts with BDCC to implement um, portions of that SEDS, which I've left there with you, which is a comprehensive economic development strategy. 
Uh, so we both work for BDCC, but the strategic direction of a number of our community-based programs comes from the work of SEDS and the development of the SEDS every five years. Uh, what you are looking at is the 2019 SEDS. Uh, and I guess I'll pause there before I move into the next piece and see if there are questions about our annual report on programs, on the investment, the work we've been doing, um, leveraging uh, investment from more than 75% um, of the towns in Wyndham County to build out these community programs. Can I make a comment? Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you very much. I utilize both sides, and um, I'm currently going to the leadership of East Vermont with Casey. <laughs> so, yeah, um, but I appreciate you as a resource for Putney because sometimes we don't always see what's going on. Like you just mentioned the business, right? I had no idea. And I do hear stories like at town meeting, but I want to say thank you very much because you are doing so much and you're networking with so many other people that I have no idea, but you make the connection for me. And I'm very grateful for that. Uh, and we recognize that small rural towns don't have the capacity right. to take on these big problems. And we're yeah. looking for ways to help you know, with shared problems that a lot of communities have. Does, does the board have any questions? <laughs> Not yet. No, I just want to say I really appreciate you um, filling in the acronyms for those of us who are not familiar with what you do. That's super more, helpful. More coming. More coming. <laughs> just keep going, keep filling us in. You know. Uh, Char Charlie, do you have any uh, questions? No questions. That was an excellent, excellent presentation. We really appreciate it. Madam, Madam Chair? Yes, Eva. I, I would like to make a comment. I so appreciate you mentioned Keith Marks' name, and I thought, you know, his mother bought that house, and she left town, and you know what he did? He rented that place, not short-term renting, but he rented it to people that work here in Putney, and it's just wonderful. Two apartments there. <clears throat> Instead of instead of short term rental or Airbnb. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any yeah. public questions um, online? Is there public questions in the room? Okay. So we would like to ask how to follow up. And uh, Meg Staloff, I believe, is who reached out mm -hmm. um, how should, we should follow up with the board about, um, I'm not sure if you all have had us as a, a separate article, if you have included us in your budget. You're in our budget. Okay, great. So we'll plan to be at town meeting if there are questions. That would be great. I think you have been a separate article before no. in the past. No. No? Okay. No, they're definitely in the budget. Okay. It's not so I have a, I have a memory of a of presentation, so <laughs> yes. um, it's not an appropriation mm -hmm. like the social social agencies. So may I, may I go to the second request? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, so uh, we talked about this SEDS, which is a comp it's a that's a federal construct uh, for creating a comprehensive economic development strategy. That's a five year plan. Uh, it is regional. Uh, a county is a pretty small place to have a sense, but that was what our first sense was in 2014. Uh, the legislature created the Southern Vermont, the Vermont legislature, the Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone in 2015 as an area that was needing some special attention. It had some special economic challenges, declining population, declining um, economic vitality. Uh, the federal government, upon learning of that, said, you know, we'd like you to create a SEDS comprehensive five-year plan uh, for the whole zone for Wyndham and Bennington County when it comes time to do that. We've done that in 2019, and you have that there in front of you. 
A sense is created by looking at the data about our area, about our towns, uh, looking at what we have, uh, and going out and talking to folks about what are the goals that we have for this area. Let's look at the data. Let's look at the assets and the challenges that we have. And now let's create a plan. Uh, it's good to do a sense for a number of reasons. A lot of places do it because it's important for projects that want to receive federal funding. It's good to have a SEDS in an area that wants to receive federal funding because it's a little bit safer uh, investment with everyone's tax dollars, right? We know that the public has participated in the creation of the plan uh, and that it's looked at real data, it's been vetted. So that's where we are in terms of SEDS. Uh, 2024 is the next iteration. We'll start that SEDS next summer. In addition to uh, doing a SEDS, we can also seek federal designation. So we have state designation as the Southern Vermont zone. We can seek federal designation as an economic development district, uh, an EDD. And that says, okay, here's a region that has a SEDS. We're actually gonna fund that a small amount of funding, not enough for a person, but for part of a person, to on an annual basis to further implement that SEDS. Now the SEDS is implemented by our regional entities, by private business, nonprofits, but this would be an additional person to help coordinate that. In addition, uh, projects that are in an economic development district uh, rate higher in terms of uh, potential access to federal funding and when there is some sort of big challenge, for instance, COVID, the pandemic, uh, the federal government says that's an entity. We know what happens there. We know there's a plan. We know there's organization. We're going to put some funds right in there to get out quickly because we know that's an entity that has a sense of where the levers are in the economy and the communities. Okay. In order to get a designation as an uh, economic development district, one of the things that we need to do is have the support of the majority of the municipalities in the region that we are seeking, so in the southern line. So we're asking all of the towns in Wyndham and Bennington County to uh, support with a letter uh, the zone seeking federal designation as an economic development district. So I sent a letter about that. I can also send a draft letter for you to edit. Uh, but we're seeking support for that letter. That's the second thing we're here for tonight. Okay. Um, I, I know um, I personally like letters that have already been drafted for me in the majority. Um, so I think that's a good that's a good step. I and mean, um, what's the sense of the board? Would we um, would we most likely go for that, or does anybody have any concerns? I would like to look into it a little more because this is like new to me, mm -hmm. but I'm sure I can get my head around it. It sounds like a good opportunity. How many towns have interest now? Do you so know? In the zone, uh, there are 44 towns, I believe. I have that right. Um, every town that we have asked so far uh, has said yes, they will, they will support it with a letter. Mm -hmm. So. And we're in the process of asking all of the towns. Yeah. So. Okay. So there's no financial commitment to this. It's yeah. just a letter saying we're yeah. willing to be considered as part of this. Yes. Well, and we so we like the notion of all working together. We think this entity is the right thing for our region, right. um, and that it's worthy of our support. Mm -hmm. That's basically what you're what you would be signing on for. Mm -hmm. So more comment among the select board. Charlie, do you have anything to say? No comment. All right, uh, Mr. Fairman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, a brief comment uh, on their excellent presentation, or I should say following on to their uh, excellent presentation. They spoken of economic development, but have not really specifically mentioned jobs. Earlier, we were speaking about affordable housing. And actually, jobs are what make housing affordable. And in that regard, I'd just like to mention that this is according to my, my source is the U.S. Census Bureau, the latest information. 
Of 24 towns in Wyndham County, Putney ranks 21st by median uh, household income, and Brattleboro ranks last. And Brattleboro's median house income is 25% less than Putney's median household income. In other words, we need the jobs here so that we have uh, people here who can afford to uh, uh, to 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 rent or buy housing here. It is all connected. Thank you. So one, if I may, uh, you know, there are so many employers, private sector, nonprofit, public sector, uh, with really good paying jobs and benefits in Wyndham County. Uh, and what we have found, and we've known for quite some time, is that there is a mismatch in the training that folks have and the jobs that are available. And so that is one of the gaps that we have been working to try and bridge. Hmm. Um, this reality fair that Natty spoke about tomorrow, hmm. uh, the P3 program, that's the Pipelines and Pathways Project. Yes. Program? <laughs> program. <laughs> program. <laughs> Pipelines and Pathways. <laughs> From one of the other. Yes. Uh, that program has been built specifically to help our students in our high schools who may not understand that there are a tremendous amount of jobs if they want to stay here um, that you know you can build a life around um, and how you would become trained for those jobs. Uh, how you you know what is the is it a certificate? Is it a degree? Is it just some sort of apprenticeship? Not some sort of, that's a big deal. Um, but how, how you access those jobs. So uh, we've been working on that for a few years. You know, we are hoping that we see um, some results of that. Uh, Natty spoke about um, <clears throat> uh, the Afghan um, refugees uh, who have come here. You know, we, knowing that we did not have um, we have a declining uh, population and that's impacting our vitality. We have worked for years to try and make this place um, more welcoming for a foreign born workforce, for refugees and asylees to come here and want to stay here um, and build lives here. So um, I appreciate um, and, and agree with um, Mr. Fairman, Fair 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 excuse yeah. me, with his comment, but it, it is a mismatch that we see out mm -hmm. there. Thank you. Uh, Deborah. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Um, I, I work in the graphic design industry and, and supporting business. I've seen so many businesses come and go. I was a sign painter for many years. And, um, and I know this is a cycle, and after the pandemic, uh, the, we've just lost so many service industries, and I, I really appreciate this discussion about recreating business, because we really need to figure out how we're going to move forward post-pandemic, and, um, and one of the things that Putney has is a wonderful creative community. I'm also part of the Putney Craft Tour, and those are uh, people probably in your missing middle, who are just struggling to make a living and they, they own their own homes and they live here. And supporting that kind of community, the tourism and uh, this, the craft and, and that kind of industry, I think is really important. And I don't know how you do that, but I'm just saying it. Uh, so so I, know, I know there's a lack of businesses in the community because the pandemic just wiped out all the restaurants and, and all the places where people used to gather. So we're, we're at the cusp of that. We can create a new world, and we really need to make a decision about how we want to move forward. And we need both housing and jobs. Uh, so uh, talking about jobs, I think, is a really important issue here. And, and um, we need them here uh, so that we can have people uh, who can live here and, and have those jobs. So uh, I'm not sure. Um, how to move forward with that, but that's that's my my observation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I want to make a quick comment, and we don't have to have a discussion because we have more on the agenda. <laughs> but um, as far as jobs for trades, how are you approaching that? 
Um, are you looking at more than just high school students? Because I think young people could get into a trade and have a good income because right now the basic age for a tradesperson, the average age is 55. And there is a shortage out there. And the state for electrical and plumbing, you have to be certified. You have to have so many hours of, you know, training and classes. And there are other contractors that don't have to do any of that. And there's a lot of people that fly under the radar. They're not even qualified to do the work, but they do it anyway. So that's something that is going to be critical in the future. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, will, I will just say that I think the state's workforce development mm -hmm. entities. The state of Vermont. I guess I won't hold back. Yeah. I think they're they're just really broken. So we are building systems here. We're trying, and that takes time, and it takes input like this. Right. So. Well, I have plenty of input. So. Great. Bring it on here. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Eva. Uh, two things. I've always been someone that voted against the amount of money that Putney gave to this outfit and cut the the amount. I, 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 you know, we do need, Karen, you're right on the money there in terms of when my septic failed last week, I had two of the Derricks now, they're in their 60s, okay, and, and they're doing the uh, heavy lifting. Then I had two of the temples as, as uh, uh, yeah. plumbers, and they're in their uh, 60s. So, the, you know, they're we don't have them, and I'd like to know when this outfit actually finds a job for somebody in Putney. I'd really like to know that. I mean, there must be a way for us to know because never, never have I heard of I that I've heard people say I learned about it. I never heard anybody say, uh, "Yeah, I came to Putney and got the job through this outfit." Well, I, I'm not prepared to answer that question, Eva. But I bet you I have answers for that, so we'll follow up with that. Yeah, that sounds like an offline discussion. <laughs> um, but thank you for the comment. Um, th is there any other public comment? Is there a comment in the room? So I think we we agreed we put on the agenda a, a letter of support. Yeah. Um, do you need it by a certain time? We're hoping to submit by December. So okay. I'll turn that around to you. The end of tomorrow. December, or yes. yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Right. Send me the draft version, yes. and then yes. we'll take a look at this and have a discussion in the next meeting. Yes. And to the first item, we are in the budget and sending someone to town meeting? Question mark. I think sending someone to town meeting and possibly um, if there's specifics about. Um, uh, Putney residents that you could share, maybe that would help. Yeah, the information on Putney yeah. specific would be, yeah. would be excellent. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for staying. Yeah. You know, it was a little bit longer. That's right. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> All right. Bye, Mike. So, bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Um, so <laughs> thank we, you. Bye, everybody. We're still here. Um, so the, moving on to the Grace Cottage Hospital Social Agency Appropriation Request, uh, Karen. So in your packet is a request for appropriations from a social agency that has never uh, asked. So this is a first. Um, my recommendation or my suggestion for tonight is to table this. Mm -hmm. um, we do need to revisit the social agency policy. And I think during the November 9th work session, we can look at that. And I expect there's going to be at least one more social agency request. There might be two. Okay. So I also want to remind the board that recently, for this budget year, the board did approve four agencies um, through the board, not through a petition. Um, 
because agencies can petition if the board does not approve them at the table. But I, I would suggest looking at the policy and understanding and doing the right thing, the right process, the appropriate process. Um, Could maybe that um, come forward when we're considering that if, if this is going to get tabled till the next, till our next meeting, could you include that policy with this? Yes. Just so we can review that and understand it. Um, you have the policy. I think I've given it's, it it's, yeah, to it's, you at least once. I'm not sure you've given the new board <coughs> that policy. I'm not sure we've seen it. No, it's been. I'm okay. sure. Actually, I don't think we've seen it, but yeah. anyways, it's just if it comes together with this, then it'll be right. Relevant. So, you know, I'll be reading it in preparation. Yeah. And I think, too, in the future, because we're going to be working on policies and ordinances throughout. And as we start going through the process, you all have notebooks. So possibly putting those policies in, that way they're all in one place. And right. then I don't want to have to be printing yeah. them every single time. Because yeah. what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. 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 But, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> but I um, think we'll have to define the process in the work session that will work for the board. Yeah, it hasn't been revisited in quite some time, right? That that policy? Right. I think equity and inclusion have it right now, and I don't know where they're at with that process. And I might it might be some of the processes are different a different focus than equity and inclusion as well. It sounded like maybe we could streamline the process or it seems like it needs to be revamped. So it does. Um, I mean. So if we if we did work on it in a work session, then we could um, look at these requests. Yeah, yeah all of yeah. Your, all of the requests would be probably a good thing to look at right during that time. Um, okay. uh, I've got uh, um, Eileen. I've got a comment. Yes. The, the policy that we're talking about now uh, arises from this race cottage hospital proposal right yes so we have I, a we have a social I, policy i know andrea seaton the development director at grace cottage so um if that would help when we talk about this um i just want to let you all know that i could probably help out okay thank you um it sounds like we're going to table this, but is there any public comment on this? Is there comments in the room? All right, so we're going to table this um, until we have a chance to look at the policy itself. Um, so then moving on to the traffic count summary for Sand Hill Road and Westminster Road. So in your packet is a traffic count summary for both Sand Hill Road and Westminster Road. Um, they just conducted that over the summertime and we got the results. Um, and I will make sure that the Conservation Commission gets a copy of the Sand Hill. You might want one for Westminster Road too because that's between Signal Pine Road and Sand Hill Road. Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to say for Sand Hill Road, the daily average vehicles per day is 246 vehicles. So during a weekday, the average is 275. The weekend day average is 204. Posted speed limit is 25 miles an hour. The average speed limit for Sand Hill is 23 miles per hour. 85 percentile is 29 miles per hour and just a little over well percent of vehicles a little over 30 miles per hour or over 30 miles per hour is 11.1 percent so interesting statistics there so sand hill does you know get some use now you say a day you make 24 hours right yes okay um so this um 
traffic count was from September 24th to September 28th. School time. So, yes. Um, yeah. Yep. So I will definitely get you a copy of that. It might come in handy. Um, Westminster Road, again, same time frame. Posted speed limit is 30 miles an hour. This is a little um, disturbing, these numbers. Daily average is 2,827 vehicles per day. Weekday, 3,026. Weekend day average is 2,529. Now the speed, again is 30 miles per hour between signal Park and sand hill road um the average speed was 36 miles per hour 85th percentile was 39 miles per hour and then vehicles over 40 miles per hour 14.4 percent that's the total okay so Where's the sheriff when I need help? Go down to Route 5 for a couple. Oh, I know. Two, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so interesting statistics. So we also have statistics for Carroll Brown Way and Alice Hallway at this point and old Route 5. So it's good information and now we can, you know, visit some options if we some, want to some you know. speed limits or some other yeah. changes okay. yeah maybe some traffic coming on westminster road or something um as far as sand hill goes i guess that's a conversation mm -hmm. um you know I, I think the, the speed you know the slow speeds of people watching the you know the lot life is right. probably bringing down the average right yeah but you know, it's comforting though that, you yeah, because people thought, you know, I did. People yeah, were maybe. speeding, but, mm -hmm. you know, not and, so much. No, no and there's, right, and there's no really big vehicles using Sand Hill Road. So they're most. Did they do a split between regular passenger cars and. and yeah, the so truck. there's. They did. Do you have a copy of that? I no, don't. she doesn't, but I'm going to get one. Okay. So, yeah, passenger cars on Sand Hill was 76.8%. Pickups and vans, 17.6%. Um, single axle trucks, 3.4%. Motorcycles, buses, and vehicles with three or more axles, 2.2%. And who did the study? Um, Wyndham Regional Commission. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. So, information. And what do we do with that? Um, what what next? Um. Well, we see there's you know speed problem on Westminster Road. You know we have a school zone there too. You know it's like so. Right. Um, well, when I was elected select board member, the first things somebody said to me was, "My main main concern is speed on that road." Right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was yeah. like, oh, Okay. <laughs> Yep. So here I need to tell you that yes. one of my constituents. <laughs> you know, we can put up the little um, solar radar signs. You know, I've been noticing a lot yeah. of nice ones in different towns, and um, you know that'll grab somebody's attention. But you know, having police present, you know, you're not going to get that all the time. You know, um, Sand Hill has been a concern about traffic. I think this, you know, reassures that. You know, it's not being overly used or abused, but, um, you know, there's discussion about shutting Sand Hill down. I don't, you know. Ah! Yeah. Don't be careful, you know. Um, you know, in Carroll Brown Way, we know there's signage issues over there, you know. So that's stuff that they look at, you know, and sometimes they recommend to us, you know, what we can do. So Wyndham Regional has a transportation planner, mm -hmm. and this is what he works on. So if we had a huge problem, like I could call Colin tomorrow and say, Colin, you know, the speed's way too fast on Westminster Road. What, what do they recommend? Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. So that's the purpose of these great. summaries. Madam Chair. Um, is that Eva? Yeah, it was me. Uh, I wonder if uh, 
uh, Karen, maybe you know this, is when we're talking about Alice Hallway and uh, Carol Brown Way, uh, knowing that when is it the summertime when there's the uh, farmer's market? That would be really high compared to other times during the year. And I'm wondering, do they factor that in? Have they done that? Have they factored in the one Thursday of the month when there's just an amazing amount of, of, of traffic because people are stopping there to get free food at the uh, 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 Putney Meadows, you know, to get their food dis distributed. So, and so I think there's there's highs and lows that happen during the year. It's very, it's I don't think it's a consistent in any way, depending on, I mean, if they check during the, of uh, summertime when it's the uh, you know farmers market, it's gonna be very different than other times of year. Uh, so I can just let you know, Eva, that when Carol Brown and Alice Holloway were counted, it was during um, the farmers market. So, uh, uh, so we yeah. we were able to get that count. We got lucky on that. So. Um, yeah, and I have those numbers too if you're interested. No, what I wanted to know was just that when people say, oh, there's so, so much traffic, it's related to farmer's market and then it changes. Right, you know? it changes seasonally and... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Mr. Fairman. Thank you, Madam Chair. There is a speed limit conflict in Putney Village. Uh, everywhere in Putney Village is posted 30 miles an hour, except for Old Route 5. As soon as you turn off Old Route 5 southbound there by the, uh, by the Yellow Barn House, it's posted 35. Northbound, Dummerston has 35 posted. At our town line, we do not have a speed limit posted. But every road that intersects Route 5, Old Route 5, in uh, Putney Village is posted at 30. So I have a specific suggestion, and that is that the speed limit on, the, the, the posted speed limit on Old Route 5 be lowered to 30 miles an hour to be consistent with the roads that intersect it, all of them being within Putney Village. Thank you. Um, Amen. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I, um, one of the, one of the, traffic studies that we did was on old route five um mm -hmm. and part of the reason we did it was to explore traffic coming on that piece of the road um and one of those would be lowering the speed limit um so thank you for that uh deborah <clears throat> i'm sorry i'm just curious i'd like to see the um the report karen uh for the uh count on Kimball Hill, and I'm wondering, it sounds like it's about half of what goes on Old Route 5 daily. Does that sound right to you? I think Old Route 5 was about twice as many cars. Uh, Kimball Hill? Or People exiting the co-op. Uh, so Alice, Alice Holloway? Uh, no, Old Route 5 South. Do we have that? We, um, um, yeah, those numbers, if I recall correctly, Deborah, were around 400. Like four, yeah, so it's about double what you see on Kimball Hill. Yes, on single And you haven't done a group high study yet, have you? Yeah, it's been done. Only very close to the exit, but nothing that actually is north of the entrance, the exit four? Exit four. No, that, no, we didn't do one over there. Exit no, there's not, no group high study. Okay, just curious. Thank um, you, that's it. No, we didn't. You no, because that's a route five. That's a, that's a state, state road. Highway. Um, who's that? Um, uh, Robin or Mary? Mary. Hi, Mary. Mary. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just pick one of you and I might be right one of the times. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, um, Deborah said Kimball Hill, but did she mean Sand Hill? Because Sand Hill had two or something, not Kimball. We didn't. Kimball yeah. had to have one or two. I don't think we did a study on Kimball Hill. We did a study on Sand Hill and Westminster Road. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Was Westminster Road and Kimball Hill the same? Um, no, no, no. Not really. No. So signal after signal. No. Um, signal Pine. Signal Pine Road. It turns into Westminster. So I'm assuming. So that, I'm assuming yeah, but most of the people who who are going to come up Route Five and turn left to go up 
and out into Putney are going to go on that same road. So it's roughly the same road and area. Yes. Uh, that route. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as we know which part of the town we're talking about. Right. Um, Mr. Fairman? I walk these roads all the time, and I can certainly say that, uh, uh, well, first, uh, Gimbal Hill at, at, at the top of the hill becomes Westminster Road, but it's one continuous road, and there are no streets that, there are no significant streets that turn off it. So the traffic count farther up Westminster Road, which was up near what was Middledale Farm, uh, certainly applies to Kimball Hill. <clears throat> the other thing I'll mention is uh, no way there's anywhere near the traffic on Old Route 5 that there is on Kimball Hill. The traffic level on Route 5, on Old Route 5, is uh, more like the uh, traffic uh, the traffic level on uh, on uh, Sand Hill Road. And by the way, in that regard, I completely agree with the account. I spend time down there, as many of us do, observing nature. And I'm never bothered by the vehicles down there. I don't feel they're traveling fast or that they're traveling carelessly. They seem to be pretty close to the speed limit. Of course, one of the reasons is some of the time uh, uh, the culvert slows them down because there's a, there are big potholes on either edge of the of, of the, uh, of the culvert as they as the as, uh, you know the, the bus culvert as there are right now. And I'm not complaining about road maintenance. I'm just saying you know it, it does slow them down because they want to keep their cars in one piece. So uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, I hope I've clarified the matter about Kimball Hill versus Westminster Road and also the actual traffic level on Old Route Five. It is not high. Thank you. Thank you. I, I like the notion of um, potholes as a traffic calming technique. Um, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would just add to that the the um, one lane bridge probably also has something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Deborah. I um I, I just need to respond to to um Howard because the numbers that were collected were from this year and I believe 2021. Was that was the fall of 2021 when they collected the numbers for Old and Five South and it was close to 500. And that was pandemic numbers. So I know that the amount of people that shopped at the co-op was significantly lower. And most of the people who live at Putney, who live on the north side, north of the part of Putney, do travel up Old and Five to go home because there's no exit for the co-op. So um, the, Howard, I, I'm sorry that the numbers that they counted were significantly higher on 45 south. Thank you. Okay, I think we're getting into a bit of a back and forth about a traffic study that's not in front of us right now. So, um, so unless we're gonna, unless there's another significant comment, can we can we move on, Mr. Fairman? Are you? Do you have something new to say? Yes, just to clarify, I compared the traffic level on Kimball Hill to the traffic level on Old Group Five. And I certainly can affirm, as one who walks along both roads all the time, usually twice a day, that uh, the traffic level on Old Route 5 is much lower than the traffic level on Kimball Hill. And I'll tell you one way you can tell as a pedestrian, how careful do you have to be crossing the road? And the answer is on, uh, on Old Route 5, you can cross any time you want because the chances are there's no vehicle coming. If you drive out on uh, on uh, uh, Kimball Hill through uh, Westminster Road, uh, you won't be alive long. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any other public comment on the um, traffic study on Sand Hill Road and Westminster Road in the room? All right. Uh, select board. No. All right, then let's move on to um, the East Putney Brook Bridge uh, 29 inspection report, Karen. So in your packet, um, Chairperson Eileen Chu and myself <laughs> were sent a letter regarding Putney Bridge number 29 on Town Highway 21 over East Putney Brook. This is the um, Millbrook Road. So. Um, the Brookside Campgrounds. Oh yeah, yeah. Right out there. So there is a bridge out there. Um, in your packet, there is um, pictures. So the state did an inspection, and um, there's um, obvious, you know, 
um, wash out underneath the bridge abutment. Um, so we've been sent the inspection report and in this we have to acknowledge the Putney Select Board has to acknowledge that we will properly repair undermining and add scour protection to abutment number two for other reasons for non-compliance. Um, I did speak to Brian Harlow, the road superintendent. This is not the first time this has happened to this particular abutment, okay? Um, it has happened in the past. They put material underneath that abutment and it stayed, but you know, of course with water, high water, it's gonna wash away. Um, he is gonna consult with an engineer, a professional engineer that knows bridges and get an opinion from them. And then what I would like to do, what I suggest tonight is that we hold off on filling out this paperwork until we have an opinion from the professional engineer and from Mr. Harlow, and um, I asked the question too. I said, "All right, Brian. So this is this should be a structures grant." He's like, "Yeah, but not right now." So there's like four properties beyond that bridge, so it's not really a priority bridge. It's not going to fall into the river. There will be access. We just put a brand new deck on that bridge too. Um, at some point, we will probably, like Mr. Harlow stated, what should happen is that whole abutment should come out and a new one poured. Or we might be looking at a box culvert at some point. This one's going to be big because of the way the road slopes up from the bridge deck. So I would feel more comfortable waiting for an opinion from a professional and having Mr. Harlow advise how we should proceed. Okay, so you're recommending that we table this until the next meeting yes. and we have enough time because it's we 60 days. We have 60 days, days okay. to report to the state. All right. And by no means will we ignore this. Oh no, no. Um, but we will have, we will get it addressed. Just to get more information, have. okay. Um, is there, Comment among the board. No. Um, it looks like we may have lost Charlie, Charlie. but um, Fairman. Uh, Madam Chair, did you did you uh, address me? Uh, you had your hand up. Did yes. You? Okay. I, 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 there, there, there was a glitch in the sound. I wasn't sure whose name you said. Oh yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I like the suggestion if someone's coming to town to, uh, to if an expert is coming to town to look at uh, uh, underlined uh, uh, abutments, that this person be asked to look at the abutments of the Sand Hill Road uh, box cover, where the westerly uh, uh, abutment uh, has been uh, undermined. It is hanging uh, on, on the downstream side, it, it is hanging in thin air. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was just wondering, is this the, the bridge you're speaking of, the one that leads up to the Wilson Tree Farm? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, is there any other public comment online? Public comment in the room? Any other discussion on the board? Sounds like we're tabling this. Um, so let's move on to the religious holiday schedule, um, which has Mr. Fairman's name on it. Mr. Fairman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I understand that the uh, top, that our town manager has forwarded you copies of my uh, one-page letter on the subject, and also to the uh, uh, to our town of Putney Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Advisory Committee. If I may, I should like to briefly summarize my letter for uh, to 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 uh, inform the public. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Having the interest and the time to consider proposed religious accommodation when scheduling meetings of Town of Putney public bodies, I am sharing what I have learned as a friend of our Town of Putney Select Board, similarly to a friend, uh, similarly to a friend of the club. 
Our title company, Select Board, have no jurisdiction over establishment of legal holidays. American governments are constitutionally secular. Neither our town of Putney Select Board nor any town official, board, commission, or committee can advocate any religious observance. Diversely, equitably, inclusively, and voluntarily, considering dates and times of religious holidays when routinely scheduling meetings of town of Putney bodies, public bodies, entails considering holidays of all religions. Is considering all of their holidays reasonably feasible? The U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's Religious Accommodation Regulation per the Civil Rights Act of 1964 may be a diverse, equitable, and inclusive example. Employers must respect an individual employee's personally requested specific religious accommodation unless it causes undue hardship to the employer. There similarly may be no reason for a town of Putney public body to voluntarily and feasibly consider dates and times of religious holidays when routinely scheduling their meetings, unless a person who wishes to attend or participate in a specific meeting has personally requested avoidance of a specific date or two successive dates or local times of day that compromise one's religious holiday, as everyone can request on, on one's personal half, on one's personal behalf. Now, uh, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm addressing you as a friend of our town of Putney Select Board. So what I am doing here is uh, is offering food for thought for perhaps uh, consideration at a uh, at a future date. And thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. Um, does the board have any comment? Is there public comment? I would like to comment. Uh, is that Eva? That's Eva. Um, and you know, I, I, I say, Howard, you're right on, except the Supreme Court recently considered religious oh. to make a decision. They, they considered religion when they made the Roe versus Wade decision. Okay, thank you. Um, Swift? Um, um. I just wanted to say that I think that um, there are some interesting points brought up and um, what we are asking for is a suggestion from the select board that um, to their committees as well as for their own scheduling that um, meetings are not scheduled on the holidays that we've presented. Um, I think there's about, I just did the math, about 30 days in the year um, that is comprehensive. We've already done the labor, already done the lift of figuring out what they are and that effort of, of is done. And it's not inclusive of everything, but it is very, very, very um, thorough. And there's kind of a caveat of if there's anything we're missing, please include it. I think that what we can do in creating this and doing this is that we then create an environment that is already welcoming, that someone from a group that is feeling like all the, some meetings are on their holidays they're not and they don't feel like they have a place or a, the skill set to advocate for themselves um putting that on them feels irresponsible i think that we get to mm. welcome in community and then um and then people get to be more excited and welcomed into the community that we're creating so it feels simple it hasn't been simple we've done a lot of work on this and we've done the heavy lift and now it feels like a simple request of the next step, whether, I don't know if it's a resolution or what it means of having something formal from the select board that gets revised every year of these are the years, these are the dates that we are going to do our best to not schedule meetings on and why, and we recommend that our committees do the same. Okay, thank you. Um, I, 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 uh, I, I, want to say that I see both sides there are I see both sides of this issue um, I would liken it to a little bit to um, to putting um, Spanish on the side of the door um, even though we don't speak Spanish in the United States or it's not a it's not a official language you might put it on the door and that's a signal to people that we are accommodating other languages. Um, I would say that changing the name of the select board from select men to select board is a signal to those of us who 
uh, are not men, that we are welcome here. And similarly, if we make an effort to accommodate people without them having to ask, um, as, a, as a gesture, that is, that is a signal to people that we are being accommodating to their needs. Um, it's not a be-all, it's not an end-all, um, but it's a step forward to being a welcoming and engaging community, which is something that we have um, been trying to do. Um, so that is where I would be coming from on this, um, on this matter. Um, it's not um, so much about um, a mandate from the select board um, as, a, as a recommendation that we, that we consider these times when, especially when we're discussing something that might really input, uh, benefit from a large majority of the population. Does anybody on the select board have anything else? I would just like clarity whether, do we actually have the proposed list of holidays in, in um, we have, so we have, oh, okay. so we have, um, last meeting I um, said that I was going to try to put together a visual representation of what this might mean for the select board, um, and I had a really hard time doing that, so I ended up doing it the old-fashioned way, um, and I did not have a chance to um, copy this and send it off to people, especially since I made a mistake. <laughs> On one of them, um, so I just say for a practical matter, the ones the the ones that we were um, given the last meeting, um, there's only there's two other meetings that it would potentially affect um, the select board. Um, we did get a, a set of um, additional holidays today, um, and I think that I think there's. What we asked for was meetings that are, are non-working holidays for, for, um, for different cultures um, or different, different religions or different, different, even different cultures. Um, and those are the ones that we would potentially want to schedule around. Um, I don't know that we can accommodate all of them. Um, and so that's, I think that's the rub, that, um, that there, we have a lot of committees, we have a lot of um, work that the select board needs to do, um, and then we have these days that are not available. Um, so I think we need a little bit more. We, I think we as a board need to discuss what our, what our, our goal in this, in this is. Um, that was not really an answer to your question, but right. um, <laughs> so we're still trying to work that the, the we're still working out the um, the days, the, days. days yeah. the holidays, the list of holidays that um, Swift that you're proposing. Yeah, can I speak to that just as a, for briefly? I the list I just looked over. I think it adds about ten days to the additional ones that are on that very clear list that was, was made by someone else. And that's only a Brahminic, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong, um, yeah. uh, holidays. And then I included the non, we went and got a little further. So that includes by, I think it's how you say B-A-I-H-I holidays mm -hmm. and things like that. So we were able to research which one of those holidays on that extensive list are non-working days. Um, and I, I get, I only get one. I think it's the first day of Passover next year is on a select board meeting. I think that's it in between now and next spring. So it's, it has to be on a Wednesday, especially for you folks. It has to be on Wednesday and then has, has to fall on a holiday. It's, I don't think it's going to be that many a year. And the piece of creating an environment where we are opening this to the, inviting the other committees to do that, but not mandating them, I think is, is this piece of creating this opening invitation. Um, and I think committees will, do their own work and research research as they're scheduling. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Um, is there other, I have a hand up, so is there other comments um, here? Um, I do feel like this is a full board discussion, so I think, right. um, I, think I don't wanna go too much further with this, but um, Mr. Fairman. Madam Chair, actually the arguments that have been presented uh, uh, support exactly what I'm saying. I, I, I underline that I have proposed a solution. People can individually request accommodation, 
But what you all have said is that you're going to work from a list of, I understand, about 30 selected religious holidays. And some of the religions that have been selected were mentioned. There were the Abrahamic religions. For those who wonder, they are Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Uh, Baha'i faith was also mentioned. But as soon as you select particular holidays or particular religions, you are advocating observance of those holidays because you are government. Our select board is a government and the, uh, the Artan of Putney Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Advisory Committee is advising government. Acting as government, you are bound by the Constitution for the United States of America, First Amendment Establishment Clause which uh, 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 many, many decisions of the Supreme Court of the United States over many decades has affirmed is uh, states that all American governments are secular. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, involve yourselves in any sort of religious observance. Now, on the other hand, I have proposed the solution, which is you simply ask, uh, uh, you simply invite anyone who would like an accommodation to ask for it, when presumably it would simply be granted. Now, a, a previous speaker said, well, what about people who don't have the skill set to ask? Well, the problem there is these are, these are public meetings under the remote open meeting law where people are required to appear in public. And if a meeting is, is postponed for, uh, uh, for uh, in this case, uh, a, a, a purported religious reason, the public has the right to know why the meeting was postponed, who requested the postponement, and why. In other words, when you're participating in public, there is no privacy. Now, uh, that may make some people feel unwelcome, but unfortunately, that is, th those those are the ruling games. Uh, th those th those are the rules of the game, and this is the playing field. Now, I realize you would like to uh, discuss this further, and that is exactly what I proposed. I have offered food for thought, but there is no doubt whatsoever that you cannot advocate any religious observance of any kind per the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. Thank you. Um, I would like to be able to speak if uh, I could. I'm sorry, wait, hold yeah. on. So Dana's first. Yeah, so Dana? Dana. Yeah. Moses. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Dana. I, I would like to point out, first of all, in terms of the government advocating religious observances, that Christmas is actually a religious holiday. Um, just to remind you guys, it's it's already we are so far past that point. Um, and, you know, if we're going to go there like, hey, let's talk about getting Christmas off the federal holiday list. But that's not what I actually want to say is that this isn't a um, a random theoretical thing. Last year, when there were swastikers in town that the town did not deal with and did not remove, the select board meeting where it was put on the agenda to discuss was on Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> and I asked over and over and over again that that meeting be moved. Um, and finally, and I kept getting just a wall and they did finally move it. And they said it was a technicality having nothing to do with the religious holiday. Um, and it's, it's embarrassing. You know, the fact that our town made me fight to have a meeting where we were discussing swastikas in our town on Rosh Hashanah, to have that meeting moved is, it's an embarrassment. Okay, thank you. Um, is that Elon? Uh, yes. Um, can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, so um, I guess I, I want to just, um, um, follow up a, briefly on, on um, Mr. Fairman's um, letter. Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing of it and listening to what he's saying. And, um, you know, a couple of things. One is that it um, speaks to me when I hear him um, and I 
mean no ill intent, but it speaks to me of coming from it's 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 a blindness that I think comes from privilege. When when a person is of the majority, they are free to not see things. Um, oh, oh. As 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 Dina pointed out a moment ago, um, our government does uh, involve itself in scheduling and not scheduling certain things on the majority holidays. Um, you know, if if uh, Easter weren't on a Sunday, uh, it would still be observed. I am sure of that, just as Christmas is observed, that doesn't fall on a week, when it doesn't fall on a weekend. Um, so, you know, the, the, the uh, points that um, the chair raised that I think are very well said and very well spoken about wanting uh, and, and what Swift spoke about of wanting to be a welcoming place um, and one that um, does not um, require uh, that those in a minority position need to um, uh, fight for the equal standing that those in a majority position already have. They already have their majority, the, the important holidays um, as, as recognized by the state. Uh, it, it, we can quote the Constitution, we can quote, but you know, as we know that in the Constitution, uh, you know, African-Americans were three fifths of a person. So, so there's a lot of things that weren't uh, exactly fair in some of those founding documents. Um, so, you know, I, I, I just, I have an objection to saying that everything that, you know, I, I want to also just, I'm going to finish up by acknowledging that this is, it is a sticky issue. And I am in favor of the um, separation of church and state. I am very much in a favor of that. I don't see this as an advocating of, of any particular religion, but more as a leveling of the playing field that could be uh, a worthwhile accommodation for the town to make. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Fremont, I do see your hand up there, but um, I would like to uh, go to Tall because uh, you've already spoken on the topic and we have other people on, um, on here. So, um, Tall. Can you all hear me? Yep. I just want to echo um, everything that Swift said, everything that you said, Eileen, as well, I'm in support of. And um, beyond, you know, yes, inclusivity when we consider whether or not we're going to schedule a meeting for religious holidays, but also we're talking about things like Indigenous Peoples Day, um, Martin Luther King Day, Juneteenth. These aren't necessarily religious holidays, but I think we need to honor and give pause and make space to respect that we need to not have people have to um, give voice to the fact that, well, I can't be there because I'm doing this special ceremony with my family or my community or whatever. Um, it just needs to be accepted that we are doing this and we have, as a community, made space for all the people that want to honor their beliefs and their land and their culture and their communities as they need to. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um... Elon, you still have your hand up. Are you, are you, I have three, I have three hands up, but you're, both of you are. I'm sorry, I'll take that down. Okay, I'm just making sure I've got everybody. Um, Mr. Fairman. Madam Chair, I would just like to clarify uh, a point about, uh, th that was made referring to me uh, uh, an inference that was made about me personally, but, but actually is a gratuitous assumption. A previous speaker assumed that I am Christian. Uh, I am not actually Christian. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other public comment on this? I think that, um, I think there's more discussion to be had um, on this. Um, we do still have, um, we have we have to 
we have to we have to suss out what the what the calendar is and what the mechanism would be and um, whether um, as Swift said whether we would do it as a resolution um, and what the resolution would say um, but I think this is a good start a good first discussion um, and I'm glad that we've gotten some public engagement on this topic um, because it's important that we welcome all the comments that we have um, and so I think that we're going to probably table this because um, it's getting late we only have three of us here we have two of us here right now um, but I would like everybody to understand we are going to continue this conversation um, and if you have um, any comments or suggestions please feel free to reach out to me or to um, Swift as the uh, co-chair of the Equity and Inclusion Committee, um, because this is a community discussion. Um, so if there's no other public comments, I'd like to move on. Okay, um, so the next thing on the list is the ARPA resolution amended language, which was Charlie, he did send me a um, email containing the um, language that he was proposing so we may be able to oops, um, talk about this a little bit anyway um, so we left so we have a resolution for the ARPA committee and the um, suggestion was that we may be setting some money aside for the select board um, to spend outside of the ARPA committee process. Is that a fair way of saying that? Okay. Um, and we charged Charlie with the with um, coming up with the wording for um, one of the, oh, this is the options. This isn't the actual resolution. Right. Um, so I'm not sure which option this is, but any, in any, I don't know which part of the resolution this would be replacing. It's adding. It's adding, okay. Yeah, we're adding a whole, a whole, okay. Whereas. Um, so this is the wording that um, Charlie suggested. <clears throat> it's a be it further resolved that the select board shall set aside 150,000 or other amount or percentage of the ARPA funds for timely, urgent, or otherwise necessary expenditures. The ARPA advisory committee shall recommend to the select board those projects, activities, or other uses to which the remainder of the ARPA funds should be allocated. We don't have that in we front of us. We do not have that in front of us. He sent that email to me at 5.11 today. Okay. <laughs> um, I know that the ARPA committee is meeting soon, right? Yes, we're meeting on the 27th. <clears throat> It's fine. Can you just read it again? I just yeah. want better with something in front um, of me. Me too. I but can't. I can, I can pass my phone around. <laughs> That's okay. Um, be it further resolved that the select board shall set aside $150,000 or other amount or percentage of the ARPA funds for timely, urgent, or otherwise necessary expenditures. The ARPA Advisory Committee shall recommend to the Select Board those projects, activities, or other uses to which the remainder of the ARPA funds should be allocated. That seems like what we were discussing. That... Pretty basic, yeah. yeah. Are we, are we come, now, do we, um, did we come, did we, did, did we come to an agreement about the amount? Was it 150? Was it 150? I said 150, yeah. but you know, after thinking about a couple other things, I don't know. <laughs> well, here's my thought, and you know, I wish Josh was here too. Um, so I was thinking 25,000 for reappraisal because we're going to be short, mm -hmm. and that is COVID related, so it's a legitimate expense. Um, Twenty five thousand for a housing study, mm -hmm. which is needed. That could be COVID as well. Um, so at least that, and then we have the proposal about the land mm -hmm. on Sand Hill that we haven't really had 
a very large discussion about. But I'm also considering maybe there's a different way to approach that without yeah. ARPA funds, but. Um, how short are we on the appraisal? 25,000? At least, yeah. Okay. Um, it depends on what, what the numbers come in. Yeah. We're they, thinking 130,000 for reappraisal. Those de so the deadline has, uh, for the RFP uh, is what, November 4th? Yeah. Something like that. So we don't know who's no. on it yet. Okay. No. Um, so we didn't give the RFP committee the 150,000. We didn't tell them that yet. No. Okay. I guess not. Um, no. Okay. No. Because we, we haven't met. Um, a suggestion is we take that language to the ARPA committee and what are you so worried? I mean, the ARPA yeah. committee, it seemed like they were more worried about the dollar figure, it wasn't so much the language. Is Actually, that... no, they were, uh, my sense was that they, well, they it. it changed a little bit over time but they really want clarity about right. what their responsibility mm -hmm. is and what you know what they what they sh are should be working with right um dollar wise dollar wise, dollar -wise right yes. right and and under what circumstances you know timely urgent yeah you know I, I think all of that language, even if it was set at $150,000 and something came up, this board can make a decision right. to right. I mean, we can, some money. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we can spend all of it regardless, whether we've written a resolution right. for it. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be nice. It wouldn't necessarily be prudent, but we do have the authority to spend money. That is right. correct. I think um, I've, it's, it's reasonable for the committee to have a sense of what our expectation is. Um, and that's what I think we can put. Yeah. And if something comes up and we have to do something different, like you said, right. Yeah, it is within our purview, but right. whether we choose, but it, it puts some stops on our, you know, that we would really be, go, you know, um, having to think very seriously about that to, to kind of reach that intention that we articulated. Okay. And I also want to stress too, with the Vermont Council on Rural Development process, that ARPA committee will be vital when we have a plan mm -hmm. so and i think at that point too monies projects will come in and then those projects which will be related to the forums will drive mm -hmm. you know the future of putney and we're looking for community engagement too so I'd be comfortable with the $150,000 in there. Um, and, you know, as far as investing that money, I think it's a big risk at this point because. That's a separate issue. Right, right. And I'd rather right. not tangle right. that up with this. And I just want to also say, too, that all the money has come into. The okay, general right. fund. We have received all of the seven hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. So, so I feel comfortable. If you want to put the hundred and fifty thousand there, and we go to the ARPA committee with that language. Um. So, do we feel comfortable, the three of us, approving this addition to the resolution, or do we want to? Bring it to the ARPA committee. Oh, I think we should. I think we should approve it. Okay. I think that's what they're asking us for. You okay. Know, I mean, and we're comfortable with this language, and we're comfortable with the amount. Sounded like um, previously Josh was good with that amount as well. So and can you meeting. read it one more time? Yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Okay. Read it slowly. And we'll digest it. I'm, I mean, it's almost the wording that we have here in option one. Okay. It's very close. This is. Um, this is uh, the wording. Be it further resolved 
that the select board shall set aside $150,000 mm -hmm. of the ARPA funds for timely, urgent, or otherwise necessary expenditures. The ARPA Advisory Committee shall recommend to the select board those projects, activities, or other uses to which the remainder of the ARPA fund should be allocated. I am comfortable with that. Okay, can I hear a motion to that effect? Um, I move that we accept that. Language. <laughs> That's the language. Okay. That's okay. All right. It's been moved and seconded to um, to insert the language as read to the into the ARPA the existing ARPA resolution. Is there further discussion among the board? Is there comment online? There is no public comment in the room. So, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, I don't have that document to sign tonight, so I, okay. um, I need that language so I can... Sent, it was sent to you as well. Okay. So, well, um, 511, and I, I we didn't change it. for a meeting. So, yeah, <laughs> we didn't change any of the language, so it's as... Okay. As um, I'll plop it in there. And okay. Then. Okay, so moving right along, tobacco policy. So in <clears throat> your packet is the tobacco policy that is, I presented back in September. Uh, I would love to have your blessing on this tonight. Um, and we don't have a smoking and tobacco policy right now? We do. Okay but it was back in 2011. So this has been updated. It does reference state statute and more than one actually. And um, I feel comfortable with this. This has been uh, reviewed by our human resource, Jennifer Jacobs from mm -hmm. Adeptiva. Um, the other thing too, so I just want to stress too in your packet is um, an explanation of what a policy is and what an ordinance is. So policies are geared for employees um, and, um, you know, it's a public body, yeah. but um, not the public, okay? So this is, this policy is basically a guidance for administrative whatever <laughs> um, you know for state laws and stuff like that so it's here for employees okay and it will go into the employee handbook it will be an appendix to the employee handbook that is correct okay is there um discussion among the board Um, are, is there a public comment online? I, I, I have no problem with this as it's written. Um, somebody wants to make, I, I make motion? a motion that we um, accept the Town of Putney Smoking and Tobacco Policy as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the Town of Putney Smoking and Tobacco Policy as presented. Is there further discussion among the board? Is there any comment online? Okay, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. All opposed? Thank you All right. very much. Do you have a copy for us to sign? Yep. Is there, there one? Was one? In there? I don't think there was one in here. There should be one in there. There better be one in there. Did, um, did we sign it before we... Yeah, we did. <laughs> here, here no, I don't... Sign. I think it... Okay. There's no original. There we go. As long as it's in blue. <laughs> uh, yes. All right. Uh, the next thing is the membership policy. Um, appointment, appointment policy. Appointment policy. Well, it says membership policy on the agenda. Oh, sorry. All right. Appointment policy. Um, so this is basically the write-up of what we discussed last week, right? Yeah. Can you tell me what the... I, I can see one error. Um, select board at the very bottom. Where? Yeah. The select board. Okay, and also in that same sentence, 
Members may be removed at any time and for any reason. <laughs> Instead of any time? Yeah. For any time and any Were time. Were those the two errors? Or were there more? No. Um, I fixed them, though. Oh. <laughs> we actually fixed them. I don't know if you did it in PDF and then it transferred or something. You yeah. had some numbers in words. So it was a weird thing. And okay, just, you like, fixed it. It's Great. fixed. Thank you. So, um... I didn't fix it, Cass did, because I couldn't even get it off my email. Like, but anyways. I think what I did was I took a PDF and I turned it to a Word document yes. so that I could wow. edit it. Yes. And then it, I think that probably... The, yeah, it was yeah. weird. That was doesn't always... Yeah, but... Yeah. But it's okay now. Okay. Except for those two. Okay. Okay, so um, do we have any discussion about the appointment policy? Do we have any uh, public comment online, Mr. Fairman? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, uh, verify, does this policy, because I don't happen to have a copy in front of me, does it still include the phrase that uh, someone may be removed from a committee for no reason at all? Uh, no, it doesn't anymore. All right, it says is for any, because, uh, any re that is, fact, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, it, what, what does it say? It says for any reason. Um, yeah, members may be removed at any time and for any reason by a majority vote of the total membership of the select board. Does okay, that... Madam Chair, I'm assuming that we, have, that we have the same understanding here, that any reason would be a reason that is actually stated in public. Uh, yeah, I think that's our intention. Okay, thank you. There is a copy online of the entire select board packet. Okay. Um, has Swift reviewed this? I haven't. I was, yeah, I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just curious how it's changed or what's the clarity if someone can summarize it, like the timeline. Uh, do you want us to read it? We can just it's read not it. that long. We kind of condensed it. Yeah, you could either read it or even just walk me through. It might be easier for my brain. Like, okay, I want to join the planning committee. What's the next step? I write a letter to Karen. So I'll just read the whole thing and hopefully it's clear, um, okay. it's clear for, the, for the general public as well. So um, it's the Town of Putney Appointment Policy adopted October 19th, 2022. Section one, title and authority. This policy shall be known as the Town of Putney Appointment Policy and shall apply to all non-employee appointments made by the select board. It has been adopted by the Town of Putney Select Board pursuant to 24 VSA 872. The select board reserves the right to amend any of the provisions of this policy for any reason at any time with or without notice. Section two, application. This policy shall be applicable to all select board appointed committees, commissions, and boards on or after October 19th, 2022, unless superseded by statute. Section three, membership and appointment. Members of committees, commissions, and boards shall be appointed annually for a one-year term, beginning and ending on or around town meeting day. Mid-year appointees shall serve a partial year term through town meeting day. A prospective member should communicate their interest to the town of Putney Select Board verbally or in writing, stating how their participation will further the mission of the committee, commission, or board. The Select Board may solicit feedback from current members before appointing a new member to a committee, commission, or board. The committee, commission, board, and its members are subject to all applicable public meeting laws, including, including Vermont's open meeting law and the Public Records Act. Members may be removed at any time and for any reason by majority vote of the total membership of the select board. Okay, so that's pretty clear. The, the, the clarity is, is that you may ask for recommendations from the existing committee members, but it's not required. Yeah, um, I think um, part of the part of our discussion um, during the during this whole discussion, um, we realized that a lot of what we were talking about was delving into procedure, not policy. Um, so I think the next step might be to clarify what the actual procedure would be. Right. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of different um, positions. So if there was um, the weigher of coal or the um, tree warden or um, one of the, one of those singular positions, there isn't anybody really to ask. Um, and um, similarly, if there, um, 
if we're standing up a, a committee, um, there's nobody to ask, right? So, um, so there's a lot of different nuances on, on different appointments that may not apply across the board in a policy. Yeah, I, I appreciate the language of that. I think we should definitely include committees and when we are and that they should have conversations with committees before they're appointed. I think we've all recognized that that's beneficial. And um, and I also appreciate that it's not mandatory because I think that it also can elongate things. Like if I have a conversation, a one on one conversation with someone, they're really on it. I maybe talk to another board member and it's like our next morning meeting isn't for a month. A committee meeting isn't for a month and this piece of they can write a letter and start that process. Um, and I'm curious on how we can clarify what the pol what the procedures look like and what and next steps for that. So thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Fairman. I just wanted to uh, congratulate you all on your excellent work on clarifying this policy and uh, especially recognize select person Alden, who I believe has uh, has led this effort. Uh, uh, good work on everyone's part. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Yes, thank, thank, thank you for working on this pack. It's been, it's been very beneficial. So clarify the question, please. So at this point with this policy, then I as town manager won't have involvement in this? I think that was part of the procedure question. Okay. So I think actually you do because everything goes through you. Right, so if somebody expresses an interest, they, you may, they may be sending it to you to get it on our agenda right. and get, you know, to get their, either their, so that we can hear them talk, you know, get them on the agenda so they can speak with us or get us a copy of their letter in our select board packet. Yeah. Okay. But then you don't need to vet them. You don't uh, no, need to. I, no, I right. don't want to vet them. No, yeah. I don't think that's my place to right. do that. The select board should be in charge of that. No, yes, but we needed to have, we do need to have some conduit um, from the public to us and Right, a logical this, seat. So. Well, and this has been part of the confusion mm -hmm. because honestly, when I first started here, everybody sent me a letter and went to the select board, and you appointed the person without, you know, speaking to somebody on the committee. So, I right, just, I want to speak to that swift. One of the reasons why we left it as kind of a myth, we didn't want the committee to be in you know, full charge of deciding who else was going to get to be on their committee or not. You know, we want their opinion, but we, did, we didn't think that was um, reasonable to have committees like handpicking their own members. Um, so that's why we kind of came up with that language that we want to take committee uh, opinion into account, but that the decision rests with the select board. The other thing that changed is we put language in there about we want to hear from people who are interested about how they plan to further the mission of the committee. To me, that was really important. I didn't feel like we had ever said, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to be on the equity and inclusion committee, tell us how you're going to further equity and inclusion. You know, we don't want you to be on the committee if your goal is to to, to muddy the waters and, 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 and mess up the equity and inclusion that we're trying to do, right? You know, or environmental, you know, if you're gonna be on the conservation commission or the, Ener or the energy committee, you know, we need to know how you plan to further the, the mission of that committee. So right. I just think that's a really important piece, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. I appreciate both of those pieces, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Fairman. Select so person Alden, the I'm so, so sorry, uh, Madam Chair, I, I beg your pardon. Uh, I was thinking, I was still thinking about her good work. Um, You're promoting her to chair? <laughs> go, no, go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, and I apologize as well, I got, a, I got ahead of myself. I really was referring to Select Person Alden's observation that uh, people should not uh, serve on a committee if, uh, to use her word, uh, they, uh, they muddy the proceedings of the committee. Uh, there would, of course, be a clarification there concerning uh, uh, introducing uh, 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 
debate into the proceedings of the committee because there may not, in fact, be uh, uh, one point of view that must be accepted as valid. And in fact, there is unlikely to be if a committee includes more than one member. So with that in mind, uh, uh, while we wouldn't want people to uh, obstruct the committee, that they challenge the committee uh, probably would fall within the realm of, uh, of, of rational and expected discourse. Thank you. Can, oh, thank you. Can I just say that I totally um, agree with that. And, and we've also seen across the state instances of people intentionally joining committees in order to thwart the mission of the committees. I, I'm aware of those that happening mm -hmm. in various parts of the state. So that's what I was really hoping to address here is that if a commission, if a committee has a mission that people need to mm -hmm. be working together, together to, okay. on that mission, even if there's lots of conflict and right. different opinions about how to do that. Yes. Okay, so um, are we ready to approve this? Um, we don't have that either, <laughs> but we could sign. We could actually sign the back here if there was any changes. Well, uh, what yeah. do you want to do? That's probably the one that. No, I already wrote on that. Oh. <clears throat> but if but if we had the back of it, you there's not the one in there. There is not. Hmm. Unless somebody took it out. No. no. Um, well, question, one minute yeah. question I need to answer is, um, are you all set with this? You don't want legal counsel to review it because that was the oh, discussion that was, you had that was a discussion. in the last um, meeting. We have in the past made motions uh, contingent on review, mm -hmm. so we could still uh, approve it and then have... It's totally up sure. to you. I'm comfortable sure. with it. Okay. Sure. Let's. I would say let's do that, and then if we don't sign it till next time, it's no big deal. Right. In two yeah. weeks, it's not going to make a huge difference. Well, the thing too is you can make a motion, you know, mm -hmm. to approve it after legal counsel review, and then I can put it in your mailbox. Okay. And you just come in and sign it. Okay. You're gonna have to do that with the other one anyway. Which one? The other one. The other one. No. The ARPA one? Yeah. No, we just, we already signed um, the ARPA one. Mm -hmm. No, we signed the tobacco. The tobacco one? Oh, the tobacco We one. signed a lot of stuff, but right. we did not sign, no, we didn't sign that one because we didn't have it in front of us. But so, okay, so. Right, so um, that's the one that you're going to have to okay. So I will entertain a motion to approve the uh, appointment, the town of Putney appointment policy contingent on lawyer, lawyer, lawyer review. Second. No, we have to move oh, it first. Okay. <laughs> move it. I'll second. Okay. Um, I move that we do what you said we are going to do. <laughs> what did you, what was it? I said, I said I would entertain a motion to accept, to accept the town of Putney appointment, appointment policy, policy contingent on lawyer review. Contingent upon lawyer review. Yeah. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. <laughs> To approve the town of Putney appointment policy contingent on lawyer review. Is there further discussion on the board? Is there further public comment online? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so we have that. Um, the next piece is other business, closing comments, and SB addenda. Um, we have taken off the membership policy. Check it off. And Yay. the tobacco policy. Whoa. We are good. All right. Uh, is there any other business uh, from the public? Does anybody else? Just, oh, yeah, I, go, go ahead. Just, just, yes, checking it off, but also please, we still need clarification on what the procedure is. Yeah. We'll, we'll work on not that. To we'll, add, that. Yeah. We'll, we'll add that. We'll, yeah. we'll replace, not we'll not replace the policy with the procedure. Is that <laughs> right? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, you're raining on our parade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Okay. Um, is there any other business online? Does the select board have any other business? Mm -hmm. 
All right, and we don't need an executive session. No. Not tonight. Anybody else feel the need for an executive session? Okay. Um, so our next meeting is November 2nd, 2022. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Oh, now you speak up. <laughs> I second the motion. Let's <laughs> move and second it to adjourn. All in favor. All right. All, All opposed. Right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.